Welcome in everybody to the One Up Your Show for Friday, March 28th, and as you can tell, my voice is on the brink. I think you should have just pretended to be Barry White the whole time. So uh, it's being brought to you by the most disgusting lozenge in the world, which is Fisherman's Friend. You don't put one in your mouth unless you're really desperate because you they are awful. Doubling up, sucking on Fisherman's Friend and Mentos. Oh, that's not, that sounds even worse. Anyway, this is uh, Garnet Lee, a senior editor for previews of the One Up Network. Joining me today on the show is, well, we heard Sean already, Sean Elliott. Yes. Exec- sen- executive editor for... The One Up Network PC coverage Wait, and formal introductions now. And his uh, <laughs> his video game counterpart, Mr. Shane Bettenhausen, and that man with the British accent. That Hello. would be John Davison. Do you of, do my full title there as well? Of <laughs> president, That's co-founder president and co-founder of, of what they play. What they play. Yeah, so there you go. That's everybody. Uh, today on the show, we're going to be what you do in playing in the first segment. What you do in playing? 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 What you do in playing, Willis? What you've been playing in the first segment, second segment, we're going to do, uh, we got some community stuff. We also have a segment on when game launches go bad, which is particularly interesting because I have a little kickoff thing. Did anybody else read uh, Patrick's, Patrick Klepik's little story about uh, Capcom and, and how they handle uh, retail allocation for launches? Yeah. So that's a really interesting piece. We're going to use that as kind of a launching pad to talk about when game launches go bad. And then in the news, we've got all kinds of stuff. We've got more on this stupid Take-Two EA thing that's going back and forth. We've got a bunch of game announcements. We've got some online troubles. We've got a bunch of music, well, specifically guitar and rocking instruments int- info at the end. So that's it. That's the show. Let's hit it. Who wants to start off? What you been playing? Shane, what have you been playing? It's more like what I've been watching. I've been watching a lot of Lost. <laughs> I finally got on the Lost train. Can't stop. When I'm not watching Lost and working, I've been playing Hot Shots Golf. You should play the Lost game. No, I shouldn't. I'm just going to watch the ending on YouTube because I hear the game is a piece of shit. But uh, Hot Shots, and, you know, I continue to play it, and every time I talk about it, I'm going to mention how they need to patch in voice chat. They really need to patch in voice chat. I mean, really. Need to well, uh, yeah, I mean, chat. it's golf. It's yeah. not like you're, like, super involved. It would be nice to be able to get and, together you know, and grand, talk grand while you're golfing. It's a chat room with something going on, really. I mean, that's what it should be. Well, it, and it would be crazy because the lobbies are full of people, like sliding down banisters and touching animals. You, you, the lobbies are kind of like what? Yeah, th- have you played it? The lobbies are like <laughs> to home. the exclusion of all else. <laughs> the lobbies are like a little miniature, super deformed version of home, and they're themed to each course. So and there's like sliding down banisters and touching animals. Right. So that sounds like an evening at your house. Everyone's just running around going crazy. And if they were all chatting, it would be insane. But in you know when you're playing with your friends online, you really want to talk. You oh, do. Yeah. And same with GT5. I'm pissed that GT5 Prologue, when it comes out in two weeks, isn't going to have voice chat. They're saying, oh, we're going to try to add it later, but come on, Japan. We well, will like sort of, voice chat. They sort of committed. It, it doesn't have friends play either. Oh, no. God. Yeah, it's not going to have friends play at launch. It's going to be, I guess. So they committed to making a patch But at it's least. so pretty. It is so pretty. But, you, they, I mean, I think the community really needs to expect these things and, like, keep asking for them and don't, and don't forget about them. So Absolutely. I'm still asking. I, still, I, really, I really like Hot Shots. I'd, I like Hot Shots, too. Well, we should play together. Yeah. It's it's quite fun. I'm it's, not very good though. It doesn't matter because it's it's a pa- it's like not something to really go hardcore at. But like this, if it had voice chat, yeah. we could just have it on almost while you're doing other things and chatting. And but the secret is chipping it in. Have you, have you gotten good at that? That's that's yeah. that's the best thing ever. Like chipping it. I in. would. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm hot for it too. So I would definitely play with you guys. You're you're hot hot to trot. What else have I been playing? Uh, I still I'm still playing Legend of Kage 2 for DS. I know there's a lot of haters out there. I mentioned it last week, but I'm an old school Kage fan. How are their haters? Yeah, is it out? It's out in Japan. Oh, okay. And uh, so in. Import haters, import haters who are upset that it isn't more forward thinking, and you know, with Ninja Gaiden DS, which I know you're into, John. Mm-hmm. Like, to d- having played these two games, it's, it is crazy because Legend of Kage feels like it's 20 years old, whereas Ninja Gaiden feels modern. And I kind of wish they had made a more modern game. Yeah. But what are you gonna do? But the, the big thing that got revealed this week that I can finally talk about—I think I alluded to it a month ago—is is 50 Cent Blood in the Sand. Dude, you should be wearing your clip shirt today. No, I mean, if I was wearing a G, I could wear my G unit. Could, well, well, I could wear my G unit sneakers. But you I'm have G unit sneaks? I do. I'm wearing my damn wearing my Timberlands. Oh, These are Timberlands. These aren't G unit. But no. So I saw this game months and months and months ago. Like six months ago, we we first saw this game, and we couldn't believe a that 50 Cent two was look, being made. Was being well, okay, I can believe that it's being made because the first one sold a million copies. But I couldn't believe that it looked good because it's Unreal Engine. It's from a good developer, uh, Swordfish, who made Cold Winter, which was underrated. 
I don't you know, know, dude, I totally know that game. Oh, yeah, I, I played it and finished it. I enjoyed the hell out of it. It was like a really, really good spy adventure game. But, you know, it was, a, it was an FPS on PS2 and no one noticed it. Like, it came out and no one even cared. But It had a, it had a lot of uh, perfect dark feel to it. I mean, it was it, it because it, it had that same sort of spy espionage feel to it, which was really cool. And, right. it, of course, it was all shooting. Well, I mean, it was 50 version. Cent doesn't have that. It has more of a straight-up Gears of War feel. I mean, These really, guys know what they're doing, though. But they know what they're doing, and it, it really looks impressive. And we, when, when we see the demo of this game... We're like we can't believe how good it looks, and it, it, you know it's it's a funny use of the license putting him in the Middle East and having him. Yeah, that's an understatement. But you know it isn't Iraq, and he's not fighting terrorists. You're not killing Osama bin Laden or anything. Really? Where because is Because that's it? exactly what it fucking looks like. It's it's in an you know an <coughs> undetermined Middle Eastern other well, Middle Eastern. Oh, oh it's a euphemism. A war. For <laughs> it's in a war torn Middle Eastern country. Oh, because well, there's plenty. Which of one them. was that? Yeah. But you're fighting different. Well, actually, there are. But I mean, so is it Lebanon? Is it Iraq? <laughs> you're fighting different, you know, factions who are warring against each other. And what happens is Fifty Cent goes and. Oh, what does Fifty Cent have to offer in this well, scenario? He, he can you can you tell us the full story? I will. He, he comes to play a benefit concert. Yes. Um, <laughs> for the for the troops. Yes. Like kind of a USO style thing. And but then he gets stiffed for the payment, and they offer him. They're like, well, we don't have any money for you. But we'll uh, give you the benefit concert. We'll give you this diamond encrusted skull. <laughs> and he's like, all right, I'll take that. But then like some guy comes and grabs the skull. And runs off. Are you so. making this up? No. <laughs> so he. This is real. He just yeah. got done telling you how good it looked and how polished <laughs> it was. Yeah. So then he and his G, his G unit friends they go to get the skull back. And what really surprised me along the way, he, apparently there's a romantic interest, and we were like, "Does she wear a burqa? Like, let us." And like, oh, we can't tell you yet. Can't tell you yet, but oh yeah, there's gonna be some romance. God, <laughs> there's a stink attached to Fifty Cent games. I mean, to all licensed games, they, I mean, they can some of them overcome it. But you know, first time you had me write, I think your previous editor EGM at the time, yes, and you had me write about the first Fifty Cent game. But when I went down to Fifty Cent and Bulletproof, when I went down to their studios, the first thing I go into this oh, room, yeah. and you. it's like a sensory, it's like the opposite of sensory deprivation chamber but it's like a 50 cent fucking sensory chamber and you go in and it's just covered in posters and they turn on this promo video and they got like these pornos these point of view pornos and they're like hey he's sponsored these they got like a cooler full of like his drink you know and then we go to lunch and they're playing 50 cent on the way there and then so the whole point of me going there was i was supposed in to interview him they made you watch point of view porno <clears throat> They didn't make me watch it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to take some of that home. <laughs> but they had it lined up, the boxes. Right. And then so we come back, and I was like, okay, I'm coming down here. I'm going to interview this guy, right? This is going to be fun. This is going to make this all worthwhile. So they sit me down in the same room, and they turn on a TV, and then they'll be like, all right, go ahead and watch it. And I'm like, so this TV show starts playing, and it's basically 50 Cent – seeming just like awkward you know like how's that guy gonna ever sweat bullets right, right. You're, it's a supreme badass but he just seems totally nervous like he got called to the principal's office and don't know what he did wrong he's sitting there with um some pr woman who's asking questions she's like so 50 tell us why this game is so 50 and then he starts like well and he starts talking she's like no start again but start off with this game is so 50 so, because so you're watching him being media trained and then basically. they're like <laughs> and then they're like we'll give you a transcription of this but then we got to send this after they transcribed their own internally created publicity video they had to have that pass through subsequent levels of like permission right. to give me the transcript of that it was insane it's eye opening to see how that's why how i'm fil biased how filtered that right is now. well and what they say is that he was unhappy with bulletproof and you know it wasn't a very good game and he was the one who came to them and like hey i want to be in a different setting i want a different developer so i mean maybe he knew and it. who doesn't think golf war scenario right off the bat but well, they know that's hot. They're like, what it's, sells? It's COD4? Right, ripped from the headlines. Cent. And, you know, it, it does look good. And so they're really positioning this as, oh, he came to us and said, yes. what I want to be doing is being in a, in the, a benefit con concert of the Crystal Skull. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, like Indiana Jones, man, only in the Middle East and in present day. And... But but you know, I can almost actually see that happening. At the same time, like when you look at the game, it, it's like a really solid like Gears of War meets Rainbow Six ripoff, and it has like drop in, drop out online co op, a good cover system like Uncharted. It looks pretty fun. So, you know, if the last game which sucked sold a million copies, you have to think if this game actually turns out to be good, it could be a really big hit. So, uh, you know, wow. I'd say it's it's kind of ludicrous and funny and ridiculous, but that doesn't mean it's bad. <laughs> okay. All right, that's what I've, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> Pretty crazy, huh? That's it, dude. We're all going out. To and I, and I subscribe to and I still can't I still something. can't talk about what I was doing in Japan, but I will be able to talk about that in about a week. Yes. Not all of it though. It was funny <laughs> how many people got it wrong. Just say that. I, I'd say yeah. nobody would ever guess the full extent of what was happening. I'm still shocked. The full extent was pretty awesome. Yeah.
Okay. All right. So there you go. Do you know what he's talking about? I yeah, do. He, yeah. Oh. He was sequestered in a, in a mountain retreat. Oh. Oh, okay. What have you been playing, John? <laughs> um, Ninja Gaiden on DS, which I'm enjoying a lot. Stylus I, Slash. I also enjoyed it. As I said, I, I'm the, apparently the highest reviewer in the world for that game. Yeah. I really like it. You gave it, what, an A-? An A-? I, I thought, to me, it felt like a really new kind of DS game. The closest thing before that was Zelda Phantom Hourglass, in that it's something that I couldn't be playing anywhere right. else. Right. It has a lot in common with Zelda, actually. It, it does. The controls and the, you know, it using the mic for some things and... You point on the screen to move them what around, and the, the gestures. Microphone? You kind of you shout. You, you, you shout to people when shout. they're asleep. You have don't to shout. You hate that. There though? is shouting and blowing, so you don't want to like be. It's supposed to be a portable yeah. game. You're gonna play it on the bus, right? You're gonna start I, screaming I, at when that it thing. When you to shout, I always blow. Yeah, or like snap at it. Yeah. Or like just flick it. <laughs> Garnet's looking like he's gonna burst. I think he's just sucking on that fisherman's friend again. Uh. Uh, John's the one apparently has to blow his DS. Don't burst when you're sucking. <laughs> so like what, do you, what do you shout I at? I discovered it? recently my dad still listens to the show even when I'm not on it. So oh I think he likes you guys more than he likes me. <laughs> but okay, John, you know, what, you know what I found weird about Dragon Sword is that like the boss battles are fully 3D, great frame rate, and like really good graphics for DS, but the rest of the game is to is you know 2D backgrounds with 3D characters, and you have to wonder if they really had tried, maybe they could have made maybe, the whole Maybe, but it does such a good game. job of evoking the Ninja Gaiden game on the Xbox. I mean, like the way that they've. I mean, so you're holding it sideways as well. So you're holding it like a book, and you have all the the map stuff on one side, and just the way that it evokes that whole, like, very Itagaki vibe. They did such a good job with it. What I thought was really interesting from the limited amounts that I played it was how well they adapted that two and a half style, two and a half D style, which is typically a side to side sort of arrangement to the vertical book style. Like you have to yeah. really, then, you know, that really was probably a big thing for the designer to think about of, you know what, my, my screen's not gonna be aligned horizontally, it's gonna be aligned vertically. So I have so to there's, design there's, every level. There's depth to the right. rooms. So like when you go and there's the monastery, and you get you're going in, and when you're going in, you know where the boss fights tended to be in 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 Gigaiden, there was the, the area in front of the altar, and it would shut it off. Right. But because it's vertically oriented, there's some depth to that room now, and you you kind of move around. And when the bosses drop up, drop in, as Shane was saying, it it it, it takes that small room and renders the whole thing in 3D and so you're you're running around the bosses and throwing stuff at them and it's all with the stylus the only button in the entire game is block and every every button does it you yeah I don't think you can add or I think that's really yeah. cool how it gives it that depth I mean you can't underestimate how valuable that is because it does add another layer to that sort of game I mean, if it was if this was a horizontal game mm -hmm. right it, it, it wouldn't have been able to capture quite that same Wow, this is another way that the game is fresh. It's fresh yeah. because of the way we're controlling it. It's fresh because of how well it's, you know, how well it's performing and done on the DS. And it's because it has this depth into the into the levels. It's really cool. The other thing I played a lot at about of, which I know you're going to talk about, so we'll do it in a minute. We'll just do it is, the other. Is Rainbow Six Vegas Two? Yeah, I picked it up. I picked it up before the weekend and played a hell of a lot of it. I played a lot of it over the weekend. Single co-op or multi? Yes, all of them. I yeah. had a, and I had I had a lot of fun with all of it. I mean. I think that there's a very, very legitimate complaint that the single-player campaign is... I felt cheated on the story. Yeah. I mean, a lot, I I, I've heard the complaint is full-price expansion back. That's what it, people... Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, they didn't... I think they were very smart about the way they basically split one very large game into two medium-sized games. Yeah. But the whole, like, you know, the, the end of... You played the first one all the way through the end, okay. right? And the, you're on top of the dam, and then there's the thing with the helicopter, and it's just to be continued, and you think when you put this one in that it's going to pick up because it says picks up right where Rainbow Six left off. But no, it doesn't. It picks up five years before Rainbow really? Six. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Weird. And you're starting off on top of some mountain in France or something. That Yeah, that part was really, that that was a very disconnected setup. Wasn't yeah, it? like where the hell am I and who am I? Because you're not, you're not Gabe Logan. You're this new guy, Bishop. Like, um, I thought Gabe Logan was the sh uh, siphon filter Gabe hero. Logan? Not Gabe Logan. Logan <laughs> yeah. something. Is it, isn't Logan. He is. That's siphon filter. Is. That's siphon filter, bro. Uh, whatever. The now, last, his now his name is shot. Generic Chavez was the last. Hey, uh, they, there's Ding Chavez who runs Rainbow Six. Right. Okay. Hey, That's John, the they paid a lot of money for those, <laughs> those, those brilliant Tom Clancy characters. His name memorable is Tom Clancy characters. Either Gabe or Logan, or there may be two people called Gabe and Logan. I don't know. But the guy, the hero of Rainbow Six Vegas is in this, but you're not him. No. Because now what they did is they took the, uh, the multiplayer character creation system and dropped it into single player. So you can map your face on to or, the main or, character. Or your penis. Or your penis. <laughs> Be my although, guest. Although it, it's it's very fussy about how it scans things through the camera, so you may have some trouble. You may be standing with your pants down in front of the Xbox for a long time. He's accustomed <laughs> to that. 
video chat, man. It's always... um, and then it has the, what do they call it, the ACES system, which is like a very simple XP-based system for developing three major skills. It's very simple, but I think it's it's really picking up on the on the feeding people little little bits of achievements while you're playing the game because not two seconds goes by in that game without some plus something popping up on the screen. Right, but it's an XP system. You don't allocate XP. It, it allocates for you based on your behavior. Right. So if you're sniping a lot, it's jacking up your marksmanship skills. So it's like, what was another, there was another game that did, did an XP system Advent like that. Rising? Yeah. Where instead and of it, also like Oblivion, I mean, yeah, Oblivion it, did that as well. Yeah, it. like the more you, the more you did the melee combat, the stronger you got at it. It's more that kind of thing than saying you have 500 points. There you go, dish them out how you want. It just, it does it for you, and I, I like that. But what I really liked about the cop this time was it, it was more like Gears of War. It was pop in, pop out, but it's yeah. only two people instead of four. It's only two people. I had a lot of fun with that. I mean, just right off the bat, one thing that, while while it does take a complaint of being a full price expansion play set, I think that like they've done some things. First of all, they moved all the way up to Unreal Engine three, and that really shows. And it doesn't like people are going to look at it and say, "What? Well, I don't think it looks that gorgeous." And I think that's because they didn't just put their rendering power into the textures and like having these drippy, you know, super res textures. The geometry in their levels is really, really, really complex. There is a, every building you go into is very believable. There's lots going on in it. And like, you know, like you're going through a room and you're shooting and when you're shooting through, you know, like a railing, the individual rails are actually modeled correctly so that you're, you know, having to put your bullets through a gap in the rails and it matters. Thank the, the, God though. That, I mean, that should be price of entry. It right. should. Yeah, but so. the big problem with it, while it I agree. It should, but maybe not every console, especially not every console FPS has gotten that it's very well. I mean, it's bad when that's not the case. But the environment's very static and scripted. It is. Are there, so not, are there not a lot of NPCs like in the well, casino? No, there's no, I mean static uh, in that everything in the environment is is like wedged into place. Like There's not even a lot of casinos. Some, some, and so many games now, everything in the environment has some degree of physics to it. And you're very mindful going through this that only the things that they wanted to give physics right. to have it. So there'll be a sh there's a shootout in a neighborhood. Where there's a scene called the chase where you're following one terrorist through through people's an, backyards, through people's and backyards. And, it's, and cool. it's it's really well done. <laughs> and the pacing is great. And there's terrorists like jumping over fences. And but there's there's a there's one thing where you're in someone's backyard and they have this kind of gazebo thing over their over their patio and there's a barbecue. And the, you pin down these two guys by the fence, and they have their back to um, the driveway that has a car in it, and it's a it's a Dodge because everybody in Ubisoft Universe <laughs> drives Dodges. And you start you get to a point where the guys on your team are saying, basically, don't fuck people's gardens up. Like, let's try and do this without completely destroying the place. And you get to the point where you're like, ah, fuck this. So you shoot the barbecue and the gas canister. So it has exploding gas canisters, but where they're supposed to be. And the barbecue explodes, and everything around it is fine. And then you go, ah, fuck it. And you throw a, a grenade into the driveway, and the wheel falls off the car. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the big problem with, with <laughs> physics that uses you know, destructible environments oh, forever. I mean, and the more destructible objects you put in your environment, the more you're going to emphasize those objects that aren't interactive or destructible. Yeah. And the classic examples, like there was this really, you know, milk toast Xbox generation shooter where nothing, like you go into a room and literally nothing would move or blow up or anything except there's a water cooler. When you shoot the water cooler, it has this great like, you know, splashing effect. And it's like someone took all this time to make this water cooler blow up just so, and nothing else in this room. Another game that was that, was that fear? That's not fear. Actually, things work really well. Yeah. I mean, most things, uh, and they use the parallax mapping to put seemingly 3D gouges in the walls and all this, you know, all the other things. Did you guys play Conflict Denied Ops, that awful Army of Two knockoff no. thing that no. IDOS did? It's terrible. <coughs> and one of the big hooks in that is that, you know, everything everything in the environment is destructible. Well, no, everything in the, destru in the environment is destructible up to a point. And, and what that also <laughs> means is, you know, when they brought that by and I played, you know, some of like the preview stuff, is everything in the environment is destructible because 90% of the environment is composed of combustible barrels and, and propane right. tanks. <laughs> but the thing, the thing where I just gave up on that game is you, you come up around this corner and you're in a tank and there's this like church spire and there's a guy up there so you fire the gun at the, and the top of the spire falls down and there's rubble and shit everywhere and you go, I'm going to do that again. <laughs> and what's left of the tower is now indestructible. <laughs> So you trundle over, and there's a there's a little wall, and it's about I don't know a foot high, and you're in a it's a fucking tank. You can't roll over that and wall, and you can't drive over it. <laughs> yeah. So I just blew up a church, but I can't drive over a pile of rubble. 
This is, I don't know if that's, I mean, that game doesn't use Unreal Engine 3, but I know it's an issue with that engine, and I'm wondering about Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway, because they've shown similar things. They've actually shown you order someone to take out a sniper in a church tower with the bazooka, and you blow the top of the tower off. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's just that part of the tower yeah. that'll work that way, and the game tells you. And that's why Crisis did it so well. You know, it's talking about, like, if you're going to go for it, you have to go all out. Yeah. And it, it really went all We're out. We're at that point worked. with tech where it, it's becoming more obvious, because they're not going, they can't go all the way yet. Mm hmm but the fact that they can't just draws attention to the weaknesses so much. Well, and, then, and that was the Achilles heel of Red Faction. Yeah. You, know, do you, you guys played. You guys yeah. played yeah, that. Yeah, because I mean, you'd always b go through the walls and find find the limits. You'd find. Right. Yeah. There you you'd find yeah, the borders. You, you know? didn't destroy that game so much as you just like erased pieces of it. Right. Yeah. You made holes yeah. and things. That's, and that, a great that's way how things it. would work. That's a great if, way to put it. Like you literally like took a chunk out of a wall yeah. and like you, erased it. That's a great mm -hmm. way to put it. You know. You know. Like the upcoming hot shit is like what they're showing in the Star Wars. You know, the Force Unleashed game and stuff. And and the <sighs> difference there that works. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. I I I still see it kind of gimmicky. It is. It is gimmicky. But the good thing is this that like in the worst case scenario another bad example using ue3 that i played recently was uh the area 51 game so again entirely inconsistent like there's a fence you could blow up and then two feet later it's the same material and it won't blow up and instead of like actually i mean they always switch the geometry slide of hand so here's mm -hmm. an asset as you see it fixed and then here are other assets that are broken half-life's great about that too you hit a board with the with a crowbar and it breaks into yeah. pieces and then gravity the physics engine acts on them but there's a shortcut like in area 51 they use where they don't even put in they put in sprites and so you see these like jpegs of like shattering glass or broken fence but they look exactly the same every time so it's like you make like sprite confetti every time you you shoot a fence or something <laughs> see, that's kind it's of the, totally the problem with force unleashed i watched a long demo and the first few times you see the enemies like grabbing onto things and grabbing each other to avoid being thrust off a wall it looks really cool but it's <coughs> the same animations every time so when you've seen them like 20 times you're just well, like that I mean, is you expect, different though you that, expect that's it the, to happen you know i mean that's the i forget the, the name of that proprietary yeah, it's a tech, special that's for the animation Right, and it's, it's really cool at first, but I, could, I was already getting bored of it after a demo. I but, heard but that's <laughs> one of the most expensive games ever made. It has a lot of really cool little tech things in it like yeah. that. Yeah. Here's what I'm thinking more of, the, 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 the properties of objects. So they say, here's here's like console and Carbonite, right? And then they changed it to jelly, and then they changed it to steel or to tin. And then no matter what, they, they set the variables at a different rate, and then it will react in real time. That's true. In like, a convincing like, yeah, way. Yeah, the doors are different So material. outside of yeah. what the people are doing that's and true. stuff, that's going to be really yeah. tough. Mm-hmm. Wow, nerdcore tech down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got a great techie so there. Just real quick, uh, one more thing on Rainbow Six. Did, if you I got play, a couple you played, things. You played multi. So you reviewed wait, it. So yeah, I reviewed so it. you gave it an A-. Yeah. So despite the fact that we sounded like we were skewering the single player, the single player is what it is, and if you go in with that mindset, and you'll have the, some fun with it. And it's the bonus, really, because the exactly. focus of what they did with the sequel is they fixed pretty much everything that the Rainbow Six boards were complaining about on multiplayer so it has you can the most important thing i think is that you can invite into a rank game which is really cool <laughs> finally finally so um and it you know it's so it's 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 near as damn it clan support now so if if i'm playing a rank game and i see you online i can invite you in and it automatically brings you onto my team and we're right. and we're linked throughout the rank experience now kind of silly that it took a whole new game to do that right but they fixed that there's a bunch of stuff with the the hosting and the control that the host has over games and what it does with the with the ranking system now um it has all the maps from the last one plus a bunch of new ones um, I'm trying to think what else they did. Oh, there's, there's like three new game types. So, um, did you play Demolition yet? Are you, so here's why. Here's what got me going back on Rainbow Six again was on Sunday afternoon I was playing with Goins and and then one of his mates and I'm sorry I don't remember his name but man terrorist hunt with the and the AI I don't know I don't remember it being this good. If you turn the AI up to hard, the the guys like you'll find the occasional one like there's two problems. Occasionally you'll go into a room that's empty and it'll suddenly spawn them into the room, yeah. which sucks. And occasionally there'll be a guy standing there oblivious to shit, but for the most part, like we were playing on Murder Town with the uh, AI on hard, and these guys were owning us. I mean, we'd get it down, we, I mean, we're not owning us, but we could get it down to about 20 or so, but I mean, they would rush us, they would come from so different angles, playing they would circles you're around. You were playing co-op terrorist hunt? And it was, so I that's mean, new too, because last it, time you had to play Lone Wolf. And it was such a blast. Like, I could just, like that alone, I would probably have gotten the game for because it's so much fun. It's like, because you're coming, you're like, you're talking to you guys, like, okay, you cover upstairs, I'm covering the left side, I'm covering the right side, okay, let's sweep right. I mean, you actually felt like a tactical team, and the, and the, and the AI was good enough to maintain the illusion, well, and that's like the important that, part. If you like that, then you probably, did you play the new, the new team games? So, one of the attack, 
not the attack and defend game. So you remember in the last one, there was the level where there were the three um, satellite dishes? Yes. And it was essentially a, a three flag, capture the flag. Yeah. Well, in this one... Yeah, they, you've you always to, had that. We have to control it for 30 seconds. Right. Well, but now you have to control for the same 30 seconds. So oh, you don't shit. you don't go and stand near it and watch the bar go up and then you own it until the guy comes and gets it. You have to coordinate your team so you all get to the dishes at the same time and go squat near it and you so you need to coordinate so that you have a guy covering you and you because you have to be close enough that you can't you can't cover the doors. So you you have to coordinate and break your team up into three teams which then go get it all at once and all the satellite dishes have to come on at the same time. So once you have all three then the timer <coughs> starts. Right. But and it's accumulated. So you 30. have to be using voice chat and you have to be working together because if you don't you're screwed. See same thing with the terrorist hunts. Like we were at really really working on coordination. It'd be like okay I've got the left door, I've got Overwatch, I'm giving the right door. Oh, I need some help. I mean, that was that dynamic was mm -hmm. really cool. I had a good time with that. So you guys had encountered no problems with any of the online. Well, stuff? we're going to talk about that in the news oh, section. Okay. But as you might be able to tell, we were playing it on the 360 well, version. But I've heard there are problems with the, some problems with the 360. I didn't really, I didn't really have any problems with the 360. I haven't run into any of them. No. But I mean, there's been some talk about it. I haven't run into any of them. The other game I played a lot. Have you, do you have a code for Gran Turismo 5? I have a code. I've, I've only played it very, very briefly. And so I played, uh, I played like most of all the C-class races. This and is prologue, right? Yeah, prologue, and I, you know. It's it's nice how polished up it is. Like, the front end looks really great now. The mm -hmm. addition of high-speed ring is awesome. You, it is what it is. It's another one that it's like. It's, it's like Rainbow Six Vegas in the same way. You know exactly what you're getting with this game. But I'll say this. Now that I had time to, like, I did not spend time with the Japanese version. If you click this thing onto pro mode in the in the physics handling, dear God, it is amazing how... Like unforgiving? Well, it's super unforgiving, but it's like it really, really, really feels like driving a car. The, like the sense of being like that combined with the cockpit views that they've done, which are spectacularly rendered in the game. I mean, it feels fantastically like driving a car. I just hate that you still have these. St I, mean, I disagree. I'm not in the mood anymore to drive a cappuccino around a track to make pass some, you know, stupid test. Mm -hmm. I'm just not in the mood. I just want to go drive the cool cars. Right. Well, they keep remaking the same game over and over now, so yeah. that that's going to be what's left. But it's pr the pre-sales through the roof on it. It's You know what? It warrants it. It's really solid. I'm anxious to see what the online will be like. I really yeah. am anxious. I and mean, it's a shame we're going to have to patch the other stuff in. And the, the AI in single player is maybe a little better, but I mean, I'm yeah. disappointed to still see cars really running on yeah. lines. I mean, you can tell they're still really running on on like slot lines where they're going. Yeah. They're a little more aware of where you are, which is good. They're actually they're a lot more aware of where you are and what maneuvering you're doing, but they're still not they're still not they don't feel organic. Right. You know, they don't feel like there's someone driving them. I have one more game that I've been playing that I, that you guys should try if you haven't played it yet. Yeah? No. <laughs> I think you'll like it cuz okay. you like you went crazy on Peggle, right? Oh, yeah. well, if I, I went crazy on Pickle too. <clears throat> so, desktop tower defense 1.5. Have you played it on Congregate? <laughs> What's 1.5? What's the difference? Uh, it, it just more more shit that it throws at you. Um, but I'm really liking Congregate. Have you have you been on it? It's like it's a fairly recent launch. It's really cool. But it has cool. this whole like Xbox Live meta game element to the community as well. Is, is this another thing like Instant Action where you're playing games in your browser? Yeah. For three for free through some. Yeah. Okay. Andrew, um, and Andrew you'll hook us up with the address on the uh, on the blog. Yeah, it's Congregate with a K. So it had they have like eight thousand games on there, and the, 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 there's two or three that I've played. So the the one that kind of caught my attention first was there's a full version remake of Portal in 2D. Whoa! Yeah, that is, made that made the blog rounds a couple of three which weeks is, ago. Which is and really, it's cool. really cool. It's really well done. And then there's this desktop desktop which is it's it's a new version of desktop defense but it's like it's very well done and you have these little little hand drawn turrets and stuff that you have to play have you ever played desktop defense i've seen it and i and i appreciate its concept i've never played right it so it's top down and there's these little things will come from the top and try and get to the bottom and from the left and try and get to the right and you have to place gun turrets to to stop them yeah. from getting across i think i'm going to try the we wear you know variant that's coming out yeah, yeah. but it's just amazingly addictive. And then this extra layer that they've done, which is beyond what addicting games or any of these other like casual hubs have done, this way of making you keep going back to congregate because you get points for inviting people to play the game, for rating the game, for getting a certain number of points. And it has this sort of layered achievement system that it has. Yeah, they're very good at building a community system that's going to keep feeding people into their into their group. And, and as the mass gets bigger and bigger, it's just going to you know, gain And around. then the achievements eventually are going to feed <coughs> into like a meta game, apparently, where achievements will buy you 
cards or something, and the cards are, are a game as well. So the more the more you play the casual games, the more tools you'll have for playing the meta game. I so mean, the cool part is these guys are right down the street from us, and we're actually going to get a. Uh, they're going to come by and talk to us and show us all that stuff, and we're going to get it up oh, on cool. one up. So I'm looking forward to seeing that because you're right. I, like I don't understand from the little PR sheet that they sent out exactly what they have in mind, but they can explain the whole thing. They swear, so that's cool. We're this happens with a lot of these. I mean, like even game types should be self-explanatory, but it's not until you actually hop on and then you're like no it sounded so inscrutable when people are telling you about it, and you're like oh it's you just go to this website and there's a whole bunch of free games and you pick which one you want to play i mean yeah so congregate like the base level is like that this meta thing like you're talking about with the points and the cards mm -hmm. it's gonna be interesting to see what they do like i think i get where they're going with it which is pulling people back and back all the time and getting them to tell the more friends well, the about other thing it. is it's a user submitted casual game hub as well so that there's there's these guys that have set up these the mini studios that are kind of getting notoriety through that but then also anyone with that's using like a flash game creator or anything can submit a game and submitting a game gets you a ton of points so the volume of of stuff that they're hosting is is ballooning as well so it's kind of a YouTube model oh it is but it, it's uh, it's I've been I was really surprised I was really cynical about it I'm like yeah are there means of rating people's like yeah. submissions and yeah stuff? so there's a, there's a full it's a full sort of YouTube like rate and comment on everyone's submission then every game also has a live chat going on so everyone that's playing the game at the same time as you you can talk to them as well wow I have to check this out yeah, speaking of models I hope they come up with their revenue model because it is neat what they're doing so far mm -hmm. I would like to see them find a way to make it to where they can make money and keep doing it the way they're doing it that's yeah. cool on that same note, the uh, the tribes light game, I forget what it's called, uh, legendary something on instantaction.com, should be out next week. Oh, cool. I got word of that. Yeah, yeah actually, I haven't, I haven't checked cool. out. So talk, talk about instant action for a second, because I know that you've been checking it out a little it's, bit, right? It sounds like this, except rather than user submitted, it's all provided by you know their, in, their internal things. You go up, just sign an account right now. It's absolutely free, and there are a number of games. Uh, it looks like Steam. I mean, I'm sure everyone's kind of modeling, you know, their their interface on Steam right now. But uh, super easy to play with friends. You want to play like Marble Blast online or this this tribes like game made by the people who made tribes, tribes like because they don't own the title anymore. Right. Um, you just plug in, you uh, add your friends, and then just join a game and play. Now is it, but the is catch it, is, is it browser or is it download and install? It will download something very very quickly. So maybe like you'll get a, the first time you play any one of these, you'll have like a 30 or 45 second loading thing. But from that point on, it's just it is instantaneous. You just click, I'm gonna play this, and then you're you're playing it. But it's an so, in browser 3D game engine. Yeah, it's 3D. And, it, and yeah, so. <clears throat> for it being in your browser in 3D, it actually looks really good, too. I mean, they have some nice textures with different effects and stuff on them. I mean, pretty basic stuff. But again, it's like there's just so many you know places to play games for free right now. Um, bring it back to console. It kind of makes you wonder if you know Microsoft and Xbox Live and everyone's going to continue the exact same format they have indefinitely when it's like, I mean, does everything have to cost this many points? I mean, what about... You know, what about, you know, this kind of stuff? Just putting, let some people of make games, things. These browser games free. are getting really good. I mean, like, they're oh, way yeah. beyond what you would typically think of as a casual game. I mean, they get lumped into that, into, into under that tag. But casual is so broad now that, that you know, there's, like, I mean, this would, would be casual because you, you can hop in and hop out and it's mm -hmm. free. And, you know, it'll probably throw an ad at you every now and then. and But you don't mind because you're not paying for the game. Just and like, yeah, I mean, like the the Quake that's coming out yeah. is going to be the same format. But that's a game you could play in clans. You could play competitively. I mean, mm -hmm. you could take it as serious as anyone that goes is, to a tournament. Is Raptor Safari an instant action thing? I haven't played that. I hear a lot about it. It's not instant action. <laughs> it though, looks no. pretty good. Dude, it's freak. So here's the thing, like, like just as, a, as an aside, I see a game like, like Raptor Safari or like the instant action stuff playing in a window on a browser, and it like, I, I for a moment have this idealistic thought of like, wow, you know what, this is the tip of the iceberg, and if they could evolve the technology over the next few years, mm -hmm. it could radically change the way PC gaming happens. I mean, rat imagine if you yeah, could oh like, God, it's already it could be, happening It now. could be the end of the packaged copy PC game. Absolutely. It could, yeah, it, that actually could be the end of that because you could literally do if you could do you know something approaching Bioshock in a window uh -huh. on a browser and, and deliver it all, that way. And the beauty of all these things as well is that they're they're constantly evolving. Like you go back onto these games and there'll be a note pop up that will say, "Oh, we saw some feedback that there was a problem with this, so we fixed it." You know, and it's mm -hmm. because they're publishing it directly to the browser. Right. Every time you load the page, you're getting the latest version of the game. And you're right there in your web window. So I mean, you have your you have all your typical web widgets up and running you know yeah. you have you have your aim or whatever that, that's right there that you can interact with people you have whatever and other stuff going it's and just really old-fashioned cool. support from the the 
grassroots teams that make those things. I mean, like, you know, mod communities that have traditionally released, you know, like two patches a week or something. They're, they're more aggressive with, like, making their game playable than a lot of major publishers have been, you know. But PC gaming's dead. So stupid it's when just, people it's say just, that. It's changed. It's like... It's exactly. It's evolving. Right. And I think... And it, a lot of this, I think people are going for it as well because of the, the stuff about, you know, the high system requirements of the package stuff. We're trying to push things forward on technology. Whereas you just want to click on something and play for 20 Absolutely. minutes. And it, have a good time with it. It's cool to see the back and forth that's that's happening with the democratization, you know, of game making too. Like, you know, now you've got the uh, line writer that was always just this browser-based game on PC, and now they're making these, you know, I forget which console, but they're There's making a DS more version we, we and DS. like Wii yeah. versions of it. Um, that's cool to see happen. And then a lot of times, like, sort of just the gumption of the people that make these things is so inspiring that you look at it. Like, just the other day, it's not even a proper game. I was watching some ridiculous video someone linked where it's, like, the Final Fantasy girls in 3D fighting the Dead or Alive girls in 3D. Have you ever, have you guys seen this? I have seen this. And I need, the, the I need amount of link. work, I, I'm awesome. looking at it, and I'm like, you it's, know, Ten yeah. five years ago, you'd be like, this would take a studio with all these people employed working on it. And then I watch this, and it goes on and on. You're like, okay, this isn't like a two-minute thing, which would be what you'd expect from a student project. It just keeps going and going, and it's like not reusing any animation or anything. And then I play Seen It, and there's this part in the game when, when you know you know how like you're in a theater and you put your hand up and make an animal shape in front of the projector, and it's always Drives the same crazy. fucking animation that the guy does every time. I'm like, there's not an animator that could have made him do a different animal shape on there. I was like, I just watched like 12 minutes of insane it's, aggro it's fighting it. that someone just did for free. <laughs> wait, wait. Some motherfucker who's getting a check couldn't make this guy do a different you know shadow puppet. And seen it is a disc game. It's not a download game, right? It's like, a DVD. It's, it's, man. A, it's on a disc. All right. Yeah. I, bring, I was playing that. I don't have that many, you know, hot latest games this week. So I was spending a lot of time with my girlfriend. Um, that, that's a sorry. It's a something awful joke. Um, and, and that game is the whole time I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm like, it's that's the kind of game it is. It's the kind of game you play with family right. and girlfriend stuff. The whole time I'm playing, it was like. You know, if there was like a played it or like a video game version of this, it would be like the hottest shit among game dorks. I mean, if if because the way the best uh, quiz puzzles in there are the ones that are like visual or right. audio. They don't just put a question on the screen and have you buzz in. They might show you, here's a scene from a movie, but we've digitally erased the actors, so it's just maybe their clothes floating in the air, and you have to guess what it is. Um, here's a snippet of. of uh, box art or you know promotional poster and it's gradually going to appear yeah. but all these things would work with gaming you know you just play a sound effect bing yeah. what what is that the sound of you know in which game and like Shane you'd love that shit too you know it's like here's a box from this I, I, mean, I, all, think, it's, all these I think it's a really smart idea for everyone I think Nintendo they, they should totally do it they should make that a Wii thing they should make that a WiiWare game and like I don't know if you've played Buzz yet but seeing it as a rip off of Buzz and Buzz is a lot better and there's tons of different Buzzes and they keep talking about they're going to make a Buzz PS3 that's a PSN game and I think it'd be smart to make one about games like yeah make one about Really smart. Yeah. Buzz, Buzz Hollywood so many, on PS2 so is there. much better than oh yeah, Buzz, I've seen it. Buzz Hollywood is the best Buzz, I yeah. think. I mean, but yeah, that's a good buzz, man. It's, it's yeah, better it's than Purple D. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so yeah, that was that was my like. Just wanted to see what people think about that if they can visualize. <laughs> I, it. I think it's I, a great I, idea. On Brian Itahar, our, our beloved Brian Itahar's recommendation, I played PSP God of War, um, and I liked it a lot. I liked it f for the fact that it was short. Some of the things I think are always impressive about what, what makes that game uniquely it is just the camera angles and the way they frame their shots. You get this sense of, you know, grandiosity and how, you know, you know, big and epic. You're dealing with titans and gods and Olympus yeah. and all this stuff. And so they'll take this big widescreen shot and you'll you'll run into the distance until you're just this barely visible speck on the your screen. stuff when you're running sort of along the, the, the really long bridges and you're just a yes. speck. Giant <laughs> bridges and chains. and Yeah, being able to get like a sense of scale on a PSP game is hard because it's a right. little stuff screen, when, you know. When Atlas was still chained up underground and you could see just like he's running, yeah, running, running around yeah you're running around him he's in the background that yeah. that was fantastic but then that also leads to the kind of you know a disappointment in the series for me and i really don't know if there's a way around it but so they get this sense of, of magnitude and scale in the game, but then they always cheat their way through the big stuff. So like when you fight Atlas, it's really just a cutscene with some Dragon's Lair input, kind of like you know in Resident Evil 4. Yeah. Um, which isn't doesn't really strike me as um, it's not really. I mean, it's hey, it's fine. It works and it's still fun. It's it's something to do, but it's like. It's not like a shadow of a Colossus level where you're actually on fighting Atlas in some you know real way. Um, and there's times for some reason when I'm playing, you know how you can finish certain people off, you know certain enemies off by doing you know all the mm -hmm. all the various inputs and stuff. That given the option, I would no longer go up and finish them that way. It's like why do I want to go and, and get, get into the Zeus, Simon Zeus's Zeus game? fist or whatever it was called, the big the big. 
gauntlet yeah. thing. You could just, just you could just beat the crap out of everything. You didn't have to bother with the swords anymore. It was just like bang. You should see John right now. He's got his he's got his fist all balled up Remember, and over his Fisto shoulders. Like was an beat actual, the crap out of it. It was a He Man character. <laughs> Hmm? Fisto was a He-Man character. Fisto? <laughs> I mean, He-Man characters are all homoerotic, but there was like <laughs> Ram Man and Man at Arms. Fisto. Dude, I thought that was Thundercats. Yeah. All of those, all man. that stuff. But um, the other thing about that game, so it was like, it kind of bugs me how, especially the larger enemies, when you're attacking them, there's no, they don't really recognize your animation. There's no real interaction. You're just doing hit point damage to them at that point. Whereas, like, the cool part, and, the, and what I love about, like, you know, fighting a Ninja Gaiden or something is that you get this tangible sense of he just blocked that. He raised his arm and blocked that strike, and I did the same, and back and forth. And you lose that with a lot of their enemies. And it's just kind of a, I'm going to go up to him and do this combo and get this many points. But they'll, they'll just, like, if they got a move that they're going to do, they're going to do it anyway. It just kind of, there's this this other um, layer of like interaction I think they can improve upon in mm -hmm. future games. But all said and done, I, that's a pretty phenomenal. Point I haven't of game. really, I, I haven't really checked out God of War on PSP. Does I mean on the size of the screen and uh, so does the character have the fidelity and the animations to do what you're talking about? Because Ninja Gaiden worked because that character was animated so well and even right. and even better in black that you could do those sort of really intricate blocks. For, for the like animations that. that are there, I mean, I, I'm sure you know animations take memory and stuff, and th that could be one of the constraints. But I mean, this was it was like this on the on the PS2 game as well. But for the animations that are there, that's they're they're fantastic. And it's another reason why the game has that sense of scale and <clears throat> and in this case strength. You know, like how right. because your guy your guy doesn't just go in and open a door. He, you, you mash on the button and he heaves it with all his might open and he or he kicks a giant statue and so they do. Um, it's it's you know playing that in bully on Wii. It's just really like showing me. It's like how much of it is carried. How much of a, a, a character's you know character is carried in their animation, not the fidelity of of the graphics or something. Yeah, it really is. I agree. You know, the character acting in in the Wii bully is great. You know, in the PSP too, and it's just because they move so well. And then the voice acting is good. And then same thing playing that on PSP is like this looks really good, even though if you zoomed in on it, it's just you know pixel pixelated to the extreme. Yeah, I totally agree. It's like something just clicks in your head, and you're like, wow, you know what? That actually looks right. You yeah, know? that makes a big difference to me, too. I agree. And then we'll both we'll talk about next week. We're both starting in the Mythos, which is basically... Uh, Dude, I'm anxious to play that, because I'd like to see if that one actually gets the old Bill Roper and those guys vibe right, you know? Uh, I think, it, yeah, the short version is they, those flagship studios made, you know, Hellgate. But at the same time, it was, uh, a small contingent of people in the studio made this game that is becoming mythos just for fun, something to, to mess around with. And they had fun playing it. And it's turning out so far that more people like this game than they like Hellgate. It's really funny. And I it's mean, like ironic funny. It, it's the same principle in that Hellgate was Diablo in 3D. It's like, let's just do Diablo, but give it like World of Warcraft, you know, like World of Diablo looking yeah. thing, basically. And we know that, that, you know, that the getting treasure chests and getting loot and killing enemies is fun, is a fun mechanic. Absolutely. But then let's package it instead of just these gross monsters and kind of like with physics, if you don't go all the way, you expose it. You know, like here, Hellgate tries to look nice and cutting edge, but it can't quite do it because it's still going to be an MMO to an extent, so it's got limitations. It just reminds you, well, it's not quite that good. And this is like, you just avoid all that. Let's just have some stylized graphics go in and fun. It's pretty, it's still whimsical, even when it's supposed to be scary instead of like here's gross hellgate and go in here and how much of it is because like you know like they describe the development as some guys doing it because they wanted to have fun and i think that really is one of the things people pick up on because that really comes across in a project you know yeah i think that's what everyone's respond everyone that i've like been playing with is like they play for one evening and they're like oh shit why are we playing this and i'm like what do you mean they're like dude because i'm gonna be hooked yeah you like just pick up on the vibe all right you guys coming back on the other side of this break we're gonna get into a little community we actually have a little thread from the boards on those expensive PCs. And along with that, we're going to talk about when game launches go bad. Join us. We'll be right back for that. All right, here we go. We're ready to get back into this. So the first post we're looking at today, uh, our poster, Child of Rawls, picked up on an article on CNET regarding NVIDIA's new uh, super fancy 9800GX2, which is basically like two 9800 chips on one card, right, Sean? It's basically an SLI card on one card. Isn't that the kind of the deal? 
It's graphics. It's graphics. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I wish I'm everyone could have seen the look that Sean just shot you. Like, it I was like, no idea what you you're talking about. Off. How much does this card cost? <laughs> I just hear numbers and letters. $7,000. Really? Yeah. Really? No, it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> is it more than like $400? Uh, I, would, I would venture a guess it is more than $400. More than $400. Right. Um, so basically, the... the Person, the report here on on CNET is talking about how the 9800 GX2 is pretty good, but it still had problems when it was faced with this crisis. And so, Child of Rawls was saying he doesn't understand why uh, someone would make a game that wouldn't run on the hardware that's out there right now. Um, and is it is that just constantly the way PCs are, like the supercar market? Are they always just trying to get out there bleeding edge, bleeding edge, bleeding and what edge? And what happened in this thread? Because I think that's a very sensible and valid question. <laughs> Well, th according to Andrew, the thread <laughs> went to shit. Went to sh yeah, it, and dude, you don't even need air quotes for that, dude. I, but, so it went to shit. But that has any internet thread not <laughs> gone to shit? That's a good. That's a good internet. question. Because I mean, like, let's take an, you know, let's let's move it into a different area. Would anyone ever, ru I mean, create a game for the Xbox 360 that the Xbox 360 is not capable of actually doing? Well, that's not a fair comparison because you're not getting new, you know, VGUs for your Xbox over the over its lifetime and stuff like that. Whereas, like, people PC enthusiasts right, are used to getting Right, but Crisis, new they actually said that they were developing it with in with with technology Tomorrow's that had not been created yet in mind. Right. Well, but in Crisis. Is, is but I'm, I'm saying, shit. but if you're saying like if you, I, I'm just saying it's different. The analogy breaks down just at that point where if you're an Xbox user and you're deciding, well, do I want to buy this game for my Xbox? But that's it's never going to run because at least for PC, there's a chance that somewhere down the line, right? You but will. Crisis is already out, and the the stuff to run it efficiently is not. But cr <laughs> Crisis is more than a game; it's an engine, and like, well, and as an engine, you want to be forward no, looking. No, from and a as a as a consumer well, of games, I couldn't <laughs> give a crap about an engine. I've got the, I've been told by you guys that Crisis is the shit, but I can't run it. Here's the thing. I think most people can run it. It's not whether or not you can run it or. I think. You know, I, I think that's most a big problem. People is a is a colossal. Well, era well of no, judgment. you don't. You don't even. You don't need this card to run Crisis. You, you can don't. have last gen cards and even the the generation prior to that. It just means you're not going to be running it at all of your your settings maxed, and that is hard for some people because if you're if you're not used to you know the way that PC things work, you're like, well, of course I want it all maxed. Otherwise, I'm not getting the real experience. And mm -hmm. while that may be true, people are used to knowing that down the line. They're, you know, they'll have the hardware that can run things. Very, very rarely do, does every PC gamer play. Like, I don't even play Company Heroes maxed. I don't play mm -hmm. it with, like, every shader on maxed. I mean, you always find some compromise between performance and appearance, you know. But I think the issue with but Crisis is that the line in the sand for that is is deeper deeper down than it is you know something what? like Humbia Heroes. I think, I think it's sort of a perception thing because I would say that having talked to Savat a bunch of time, that the Crytek guys said, so here's the way, everybody thinks in the PC world of scalability, meaning that I need to write my engine so that it can scale down at low enough to get everybody in. Mm -hmm. And these guys still think about scaling down low enough to get people in, but they also think the other end. They think, how do I scale it on the other end. Right, which is so the point about Crisis, where they said, we want Crisis to still look contemporary five years from right. now. Right, and that's and so that kind of gets them in trouble, because then everybody, of course, when they take the box home, they want to run it at whatever the max settings are. Because every image and video released on the thing, is it is it running maxed? So when you take it home, your first reaction is, this doesn't look like the screenshots yeah. I looked at on one I think oh. when you take it home, though, and if you run it at medium, your reaction is, holy shit, this looks good. It's so impressed. good that you're not worried. Maybe it's somewhere in the back of your mind, hey, it doesn't look as good as a screenshot that like some kid posted on the internet. But the first thing in your mind is, some this looks fucking good. good. Like they were looking to you. But for well, I didn't. I don't have the. Clip, right? I, <laughs> I, I want to make like you a, put it a on quick the cover twice. Reverse analogy, though. I mean, one of one of their ideas is yes, that this game's going to have a long tail. People will continue to buy it over the years. It's not going to be comes out this season. It either sells a million within a month and it dies, or it keeps going. But on the reverse thing, I just kind of wanted to point out when a console comes out, we'll all buy software that doesn't take advantage of the system to its ability. We'll knowingly say, "I'm going to buy this game," even though I know it's only taking advantage of like 25 percent of this machine's capability. It's I not think quite anyone the same. actually does that. 
I think well, we you, do. When you buy launch titles, you're, you know you're buying. You know, damn you know well. you're buying things that aren't that good. But I'm and, th- and that's because and if they're like, well, for the people that wait down the line, the software is right. going to take advantage of the system. It's like early adopters are fucked but, but all Sean, the time. So, it's just how. But Sean, I'm curious. At E3, when we see Crisis running on 360 and PS3, whatever Crisis it is, if that Crisis runs better than the average person's PC Crisis, well, then I think that's the problem. Like, if you can get better, better performance out of a console that costs less than your video card, mm-hmm. well, that's the problem. All right. Here, well. Let let me let me wrap this one up because I want to move on for a bit. Yeah, yakety yakety blah. Fill, fill, you know, put it back to the supercar thing. He said it's like asking why make a Ferrari so fast if I can only go the speed limit. For one, you're still going to be moving faster than everybody else. And two, if you find a racetrack, you're going to be able to go as fast as you want. It's the same way with Crisis. Scaled down, Crisis is still really really good looking. Max settings, Crisis is really 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 good looking. So I think one of the things that that could be done in future with these things is that I mean, you got like JFW did two cover stories on Crisis. Yeah. When you're covering it, everything that's being provided and talked about is is the ultimate experience. And I think to get more in line with what people are actually going to see with coverage of PC stuff, there needs to be more of a push to be like, this is what it's going to look like for you. Not And not kind of dressing it down or making that out to be bad. And it's it's a PR issue as well, because the screenshots that came out of EA on that thing were all, like, fucking impossible resolution. But I think there's 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 an obligation to be like, all right, normal people that have a, you know, $1,500 machine with an OK NVIDIA chip in it, it's, it's still going to look great, and this is what it's going to look like. And then there's not that... Like, well, this isn't quite what I was being told it was going to be. Like, I mean, I remember reading those stories and thinking, this thing looks fucking amazing. These guys' yeah, but faces John, were like There's this. bull shots for console games. We know that. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> and that. But, but uh, you know, those things are, you know, Halo 3 sold 8 million copies. Crisis didn't, you know? You Crisis could make is this huge technology the like masterpiece. For, and for it is that worldwide. I mean, I don't want to be like the defender because I think it was like, I think it's a real problem as well with mm-hmm. the way that PC works. But at the same time, I have heard from other from multiple sources that the game sold over a million worldwide already, and it's continuing to be a, a consistent seller. But it was seller. it was a part but of the problem with PC games, the PC games market deteriorating when it's like it's like it's irresponsible to the consumers because the 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 people that will keep buying these crazy you know two chips on one card at more than more than the price of a PS3 graphics card, <laughs> the number of those people that want to do that for games is getting smaller and right. smaller and smaller. But and you smaller. know what the good news is that those that by having those dual chip cards like that pushing the bleeding edge, it brings all the prices down. And I think we're finally at a point in the PC like Vista DX10 lifespan when we're seeing a point where you can go out and buy a gaming computer again for a reasonable price like there are any number of guides out right now where you can put together a, a machine from parts if you're willing to do the Lego build thing for a thousand bucks that'll run Crisis and look mm-hmm. great and you know what if you don't want to build it go to Dell the new the new entry level XPS machine is like 1400 bucks and it will run the shit out of Crisis I mean, so it's it's not seven thousand dollars. It is like right. you say that. Well, I was those exaggerating for effect, obviously. In, in the 3D, you Dumbass. know, the three D effects era. <laughs> How did I? Want people to were willing to that support. Shit. People were willing to pay all the money to to play Quake Two and Quake Three and yeah. all these things in the command. But what's and happening now? now it, this is crisis is the poster child for this panic. Well, exactly, like, and, it, and it's getting so beaten up on. So many people are playing PC games worldwide, but more and more they're playing on laptops and they're playing on all that's these the things. That's the key, laptops. And that's why people are going for. That's why like Mythos is a, is a brilliant John, idea and Battlefield. Heroes and all these things were so. I mean, a lot of people. It's weird because the same companies. It's kind of like just diversifying your your mm-hmm. your investments, you know. Like so, EA at the same time that they released Crisis, they announced Battlefield Heroes, which will run on anything. At the same time, for Heroes, they say we're not going to charge you. Like you can buy things, but they're convenience perks. You're mm-hmm. never going to buy weapons and abilities. And then people are already s- squeezing code out of, you know, B- Battlefield Bad Company that says they're going to charge people to buy weapons. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's it. I guess the point I'm making John is that yeah, he tries everything. PC, PC Mag just got the shit kicked out of him on this whole desktop versus laptop thing. And I think what's happening is that a lot of people, particularly like people at college and like younger people that have more time for playing games and Who stuff. Who wants a desktop? Who wants a desktop? I don't, I don't want like, a desktop. It's, it's a real pain in the ass. And, and like, and they don't have the, a lot of them don't have the juice in them or the ones that do weigh like eight pounds and they they have 17 inch screens and they're just, they're, I mean, have you seen that X, the, the XPS, like the, the really the hard one? one? I, I hate that. It's <laughs> fucking enormous. I don't like the case. The radiator. 
It looks like a giant radiator. The, it's no, funny as the, the new. I mean, the I'm talking about the laptop. I mean, the laptop oh, is massive. It's yeah, it's like a portable <laughs> but, desktop. But it's I a think mess. I think the real big problem is like turning turning first person shooter players from being PC gamers to being console gamers, which is what has happened the yeah. la- in the last eight years. That is ultimately what's what's going to change all this. And like exactly, yeah. people people don't want to have to buy a new video card to play the new FPS. It's like they pain, don't. Who wants to do that? It's in the ass. <laughs> And all honestly, right. I hate putting the damn. Have you ever put a card in? I have. Got, oh Jesus Christ! It's back on this. The last video card. card is. This is why we need your GFW my, radio next week. The last video card I installed was my Voodoo Three, and Mark yeah. McDonald. It wasn't that hard. But that's like, <laughs> and, oh yeah, yeah. Like that, if I was, I was thinking is, you were going to say that it's hard. Based no, it wasn't hard. <laughs> well, I shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to install a new video card. <clears throat> Last no. point on that, though, just yeah. because this is like the thing that we've got these people that are dedicated on our boards. Like they live to do nothing but defend like PC. <laughs> you ever see they come on there and it gets it's just. No, insane. I've never seen them. But to the, the point you're making, Shane, about whether or not you want to pay another, to be fair, another 140 for a good a high end graphics card. Or do you want to use that as a down payment on a PS3 or something? You also have to take into account the TV that it takes to play those. Right. And, um, and I know once you buy the TV, you're good. You don't have to buy a new one every time you buy a console but i'm just saying when you do like the tit for tat and the money no matter how you slice it gaming is expensive yeah and it's not it's not i mean yeah john you're clearly exaggerating for yeah. effect you know when you say seven that just like when you say i think it's double d i think she had seeds ex- exactly i think the problem the problem is that there's just a the, the speed of it and the scale and the software the really high profile software is always outpacing the, te- the technology that's at a reasonable price you ought to hear how many girls he slept with <laughs> Let's get All right, so <laughs> don't don't worry words. about going out and getting your PC. And when you do go out and get your PC, like anything more than two is even possible, huh? <laughs> there's an there's an enormous library of PC games out there, and Red Swirl has kicked off a cool thread that is assembling a PC centric pile of shame. The idea here is to come up with twenty dollar and under per games that are not online play multiplayer focused that you could pick up and, and get into your with your new PC. Here's here's some of the stuff on the list so far. Original Half-Life, StarCraft, CNC3, Fear, Stalker, Bioshock, Planescape Torment, Deus Ex, SWAT, Rainbow Six One and Two, Ghost Recon, Riddick, Total War, Company of Heroes, System Shocks, and one of my favorites, No One Lives Forever. This is... Will System Shock run on... uh... You should explain what the pile of shame is. Okay, so yeah. Because it sounds like it's a bunch of shit. But the shame is supposed it's to be... It's our shame. Yeah, for the, not The pile of shame started because once upon a time on this on this podcast, I was talking about how sad it is when I go home and I see this stack of games on my shelf that are, like, still sitting there in shrink wrap. And then I keep kind of, like, actually taking the trouble to organize and keep, like, oh, the ones on the right end are the ones I'm going going to play. Yeah, because I'm... And it gets bigger know. and bigger I, and bigger. I tried playing System Shock about eight years ago, and that shit is DOS, and it was, it was running way too fast eight years ago. Maybe... And it's not going to be yeah. easy. It's not going to be easy now, guys. Maybe I think a, I think a PC with a seven thousand dollar graphics card <laughs> in it would probably run it a little too quick. Yeah, a little too fast, maybe. But it's probably slow down programs and emulators. I got and one shit. to add to that. One that I always always wanted to play and I still have kicking around somewhere is Patrick Lift's previous game, the Star Wars one. What was it called Empire at War? Actually, really good, and it had an add-on as well. Yeah. Yeah, I never got around to that either. It was a good game. And I have a feeling that the universe at war may end up in a pile of shame at some point too, because it's there, and I I, I know I'm going to mean to play it. <laughs> Pick it up on 360. You'd be surprised. Yeah? Yeah. I'm st- so stunned at how well the controls work on a controller. They, I mean, they finally, like... It has a really interesting story. I like the whole, like, your ali- the aliens. And they see, the, I, the story part, like, that was pretty flat to it. I was like, really? I've seen this I'm before. just intri- I'm just intrigued by the fact that it's not Earth defending off the alien invasion. You know, it's... No, not at all. You know, <laughs> it's basically... Is it Robotech? Well, it's like you're it the a- you're is. the aliens, and then when you get there, these other aliens turn up out of the pyramids or something. And no, no, that's and the third. No, no, no. That's the third race. Oh, that's the, the third very, race. The first training, you're actually the human faction, and you're getting your and ass then, kicked. And then the, the the bad aliens come in and whoop your ass, and then the good aliens come in to save you. That's why I was trying to think of Robotech. I was like, was there like the th- equivalent of a third, like a beneficent faction? I mean, there's like Robotech was all kinds of fucked up. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's it's pretty good. The combat is good. The three factions are neat because they're really, really, really different. It's put mm-hmm. together well. Anyway, some other uh, the ones that are thrown out there. Thief, you should add to there. Uh, absolutely, two. man. Ultimate Underworld one. Yeah, really? Shane, kick some of the old school PC games. I'd probably run in a browser now. It probably would. It's a good game. On Legendary eighty six throughout. The, the last uh, PC game you played. It was actually <laughs> no, it was not <laughs> the last. PC Fifteen game years ago. <laughs> Aliens versus Predator one and two from <clears throat> On Legendary eighty six. Uh, Great Fox Tastical suggested the Black Isle Studio Library. I mean, you, you, you can't go wrong anywhere there, right? And LucasArts Adventure Games, definitely agree with them on those. 
Uh, what else it looks in good? Really, I think here. you should add Team Fortress Classic, which you can if when you pick up Half Life, you could try it. And everyone that's used to playing TFC now, it'll, I mean TF2, it'll be an interesting education mm -hmm. for you. See how we used so, to do it. I actually have the answer to your System Shock questions, Shane, and it uh -huh. comes it comes from Ugly Drunk. <laughs> Great name. It says you can skip the first System Shock as it has an H2L. Well. The plots do connect, but System Shock 2 pretty much explains everything that happens in the first game. That's a, that's I think it's a cool place. So jump in with your PC I need suggestions. To, I need to go back and play Sam and Max since the beginning of season one. I keep meaning to. Well, I'm nervous now about those because you know how Ryan Ryan Scott from GFW in uh, and uh, one up always advocates them, says they're hilarious. And he says the same thing about the old Leisure Suit Larry games. And they're not. And then I went, like, Sean Baby just turned into story for us. It was uh, like the six shittiest gag Leisure Suit Larry jokes. And reading it, I mean, I, even if he's handpicking the shittiest ones, like, it gives me a sense for what these games Dude, are about. And there's like, there's no way Sean, this is funny. you had to be these there. These shits are not you funny. You had to be there. In 1988, when I was, me and my cousin, we played through Leisure Suit Larry and one, liked one and two. Oh, my God. Coolest thing I ever did in my but entire that's life. Like when I was you had eight, to be there. My friend had the go go <laughs> clock, and that's like a pick. Every 60 fucking seconds, a pixelated titty would appear on the screen <laughs> on, in, like, black and white. Yeah, if you if you remember, we like, thought that was if rad. you remember downloading, like, like CGA porn, <laughs> like, if you remember wait, waiting all night to download CGA porn off of a BBS, then you could have appreciated. Appreciate Leisure Larry. Not now. CGA? No. Eight, Not now. Eight color porn? <laughs> oh, yeah. You gotta, see it, you gotta see it to believe it. And you, you have to look, have to, you have to you look have twice. To, you have to stand 20 feet away to be able to really. Yeah, that's like, what the go go clock is. I have CGA. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Shane still has like a notebook CGA, someplace TNA, with right? like all the alt, the all, yeah, the alt binaries. Snapping one off from the other room. <laughs> Man, like Sierra Softcore Porn Adventure with Bernie Williams. Never, that's never gonna be topped. All right, then. Pud Torque 2000. <laughs> so, uh, moving right along, Patrick Klepek over on the MTV Multiplayer blog wrote a pretty interesting story on deciding the fate of Dante and Phoenix, how Capcom predicts game sales. And in it, he got to talk to Christian Svensson, who's Capcom's Vice President of Business Development and Strategic Planning. And the point I'm picking out here to start this conversation about how game launches imp are how they go bad and what makes a good one is this point. He says the sales life cycle of a product is shrinking and he finishes up here in a minute after that and says if a game underperforms in its first week, it's more than likely dead on arrival. That's not a news flash. I mean, it's. Kind of, I think it's also kind of. Oh, I think that's pretty serious. No, I don't actually. I think. I think that is indicative of all media, like film, you know, television premieres. You know, series get like two or three weeks before they get the cut. Now, music sales, everything, and and a really good game does have legs. If you look at the, the most successful games ever. They're games that continue to sell. A game like, you know, New Super Mario Brothers, which has sold like 10 million copies worldwide. And, you know, Capcom can say, oh, you know, you have to sell all your games in the first week. But if it's a really good game, then it can it can beat that. A and better I, example, though, because that, that came out strong. A better example would be if a game that came out and, and it was overlooked and then later a on slow in burn. its life. Yeah, that, that, happens, it, that does happen, too. I mean, there's fewer yeah, I mean, examples of that. Epic was saying that that's how it been the case for, you know, that they're not panicked about the... the allegedly, you know, abysmal sales of Unreal Tournament 3 for PC because it's like if they're doing this number every month consistently, they hit that mark all, all the same. But yeah, it is. I don't know, but you're right. In all media, is it, is it just because there's so many more things coming out? Is it because there, there's so many more eyes well, on them? I mean, there's so much well, more. The hype's that much louder you're competing, surrounding You're launch. competing for retail shelf space, and that is a big deal because the, that is the, big, the deal. big box retailers, I mean, they need to make initial orders. They need to like have pre-orders. They need to like, have you know, POP marketing shit. The ad campaign is going out. You know, like you're, it all, it all, the, the whole industry works in that way to make it happen. It's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. But it is very much so. As we, as we move towards digital distribution, as you don't have to like sell your product into a store, there's more and more potential for a game like Portal, if it came out digitally, to sell more a year later mm -hmm. than it did its first week. And just, I mean, and online sales, I mean, like, you know, the stuff that Best Buy is most, per you know, terrified of is is people like Amazon selling more and more games. Their market share is going up. And up. I think the Capcom example is interesting, though, because you've got, so it's the Phoenix Wright games and Devil May Cry 4 they were talking about specifically, right? Um, actually, was it Devil May Cry 4? No, it was uh, Dead Rising. Oh, okay. Because Dead Rising was was a bizarre anomaly. Well, right. So Dead Rising. Well, so first of all, one of the things that comes into play, like in a DS game, is how long it takes to make the damn things, and that's one of the things that they also brought up later. He says on the uh, Spence said on the DS that it takes them 50 to 75 days for a production order on a DS title to reach the U.S. So they've been a tremendous. Well, those come on boats from from Japan. Mm -hmm. But you know, well, they also, <laughs> come on boats. They, they come on planes. They come on boats. They really do. And. Capcom, specifically with Phoenix Wright, I'm calling bullshit because when they announced Phoenix Wright 3, 
for America, I remember a Capcom representative saying to the public, hey, fans, you better buy this one, or we might not bring F Ace Apollo Ace, the, the real DS sequel. We might not bring that one out if you don't buy this one. And I'm like, really? You're going to, like, threaten your fans with, we're not going to give you the actual DS endemic title unless you buy this third GBA port for full price? I was like, bullshit. Like, I was... I wanted the real the real sequel at that point. I was like, if you're gonna like threaten me with not releasing that, uh, that's kind of shady. And of course, they put it out. You know. So we <laughs> we brought up slow burns. I mean, I think one of the biggest slow burns we've had in recent memory is Halo. The original Halo was not a big winner on first day. Well, it, that it was, was also attached yes, to the platform. That was I mean, yeah, that was symptomatic of the buy. platform. Right. Well, it, it's because it came out with the platform. You didn't have the, you didn't have but, the install I base did, yet. But example, it kept going. Some resistance going. is very much like that. Resistance. But know. other good examples like Animal Crossing, a game like a good game example. like that, or you know, in, if you look in Japan, there's a lot of examples of things, things that came out really small, like like the brain training games. Like those games started really really yeah. small, but it ultimately <clears> sold millions and millions of and copies. The one that's that's kicking it now, and it's <laughs> it's like is Carnival Games. My God, they've sold like two and a half million copies right. of that thing now. Or Call of Duty 4 being the number one game on Xbox 360 in America, all platforms for the last four months. So let's talk about that one for a minute. How much of its momentum is based on a successful <clears throat> launch? It had a good launch, but it's been more successful after launch. I, I, I think that its launch was more than just successful. It, it, it managed to actually capture people's attention, and it, it, it built up very well. It didn't maybe have a Halo 3 launch. Well, but then the Halo 3 launch was, was, was you know, by design the biggest launch of all time. I mean, they, they manufactured that launch. They, I, think, I think the difference is that Activision has gotten very, very good at judging who the audience really is. Halo was made for who Bungie wanted, wanted the audience to be, whereas Call of Duty 4 is is pitched right down the middle at exactly who is playing video games. And it's, it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not all that complicated. It's funneling you down a very dramatic tunnel and keeping you interested the whole right. time. Because when you think about it, this is the fourth version of a Me Too retread. And it's kicking Halo's ass now. And it's that's I mean that's how good Activision and Infinity Ward have gotten at reading who it is that's actually buying games, because it's like I mean Call of Duty was like it was it was designed. I think your condemnation of it as a Me Too retread is a bit stern. Call of Duty was created as a response. It was Activision. The Medal of Honor. It need they needed a Medal of Honor. Right. So they stole the essentially stole the team and redid it. And they stole the title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> but, you know, I think the ultimate example here, a little game called World of Warcraft. Hey, that didn't sell 8 million copies its first week. <clears throat> and, you know, maybe if, if retailers see the long the long tail of a game and don't don't offer discount credit, you know. World of Warcraft sold a fuck ton. Of course it did. Launch. Of course it did. But It had a huge launch. Of no, it course had a, it had a huge launch. It had, but a, it had a rough launch because like, well, I, yeah, I was on one of it didn't the, work or whatever, but for a long in, in while. terms of a lot of publishers, once that game is to retail, they're, they're kind of, well, you know, we'll see how it does and we're, we're going to give them buyback credit if it doesn't sell we're going to lower the price you know if, if you really believe in your game you have to be able to, to stand behind it the long way and like i think a lot of publishers don't do that now mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of them give up they I give mean, up that's really the thing. quickly i see it on small scale company heroes it's like they that you can see at any time you're playing how many people are online at any given moment and it's like over the years over the past two years it goes up and up it's like higher now than it ever was and it's like every two months you get it goes up by like a significant amount and that's a game where like again on pc there's people catching up with the hardware to play these things, but there's also fewer games to pick from, and then there's widespread digital distribution. So between all those factors, um, and then it, it's giving it time for word of mouth. You know, you be people like me preaching about it and stuff that are totally addicted to it, and then more and more people try it, and they do the same, and mm -hmm. then you see that happen. But I can understand on a console, it's like, if you're not going to have an army of EB ga and GameStop people telling you to pre-order this over and over again you, you can only count on that for so long and i mean it, it's easy for things to slip through the cracks and then we in the media help everyone we're always worried about the next big thing and so it's like next week here's what we're talking about now like that other shit shit that's ancient history maybe like we'll do a retronauts on it a couple years from now but i mean it is i mean i'm i'm, I'm exaggerating for no, a but fact you're here actually making but this point. is one thing that happens with you know with the way that we're we're always looking at the next thing in in the enthusiasts and, and in what we do in the enthusiast press, you know. Yeah, so that's why, that helps. I mean, Halo and Call of Duty particularly more than any other game so far this generation, that because the community loves them so much, mm -hmm. and it's also there's a lot of crossover between the two. People will hop back well, and forth from one to the I other. I think Activision they, they were going to realize the problem when when it comes time in November to release Call of Duty Five. It's like, well, should we be really yeah. releasing Call of Duty Five this year? Maybe we shouldn't. Halo One sold for five years, you know, like. 
the best thing they could really do is just keep adding stuff to the people that are re for the people that are really passionate about. Like Modern everything Evil. you described well. to me when I was listening to you guys talk about Rainbow Six, I was like, shit. Everything you said that sounds just like PC, you know, patch domain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like every single thing it you does. said. Yes. Yeah. I, like uh, no that's argument. what Epic would give you for free or something. Well, and, and, and Epic's been very proactive about it. You know, you talk to Mark, that's a great point. You talk to Mark, and you, like you said, okay, first of all, they're willing to wait for the game to build and, and, and have the audience come in over time. And they actually strategize for that from the beginning. They plan, okay, we're going to launch the game, and then after we launch the game, we're going to do this sort of patch, and we're going to do this internal content upgrade, you know, because they always bring you that big, you know, Cliffy B pack of maps and mods and all that kind of stuff. And they're thinking, you know, six months, 12 months, 18 months down the line, and supporting the game the whole time. A game that I've loved that they've done that with on console is Warhawk. It's one of the only games that they've been at that aggressive. They're about constantly keeping adding, it, adding keeping to it. Keeping it vibrant and keeping the community happy. And as the community is happy, anyone, as the as the install base of the PS3 is, is coming up <laughs> and they're still relying on word of mouth, and people are saying, what should I play on PS3? I know I want to, I know Uncharted and Ratchet are good. I know Mod Motorstorm looks pretty. What else should I get? Anyone that's been in Warhawk will say, you've got to get Warhawk. It's and awesome. you know what? I can vouch for the validity of that because I had, other than playing in the beta, I really haven't played Warhawk. And just this like past week and a half or so, I've been like, you know what? I see so many people excited for the 1.3 patch and what's going to be in it that I'm like, should I got to go play that? I really should go play well, that. And back to the subject, I think Capcom in particular, if you look at Resident Evil 4, they did an excellent job with that game. It came out they at full did. price. It was a huge deal. It was a great game. Everybody had to have it. And they, they managed to re-release that game on two other consoles at, you know, not a full price point, but a pretty meaty price point and sell a lot of copies. So, you know, obviously the, they were able to take one game that was a really good game and stretch it out, make it, a lot of people got it, a lot of people paid money for it and enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And they, they never had to, you know, lose money on that game. So you pointed <laughs> to the careful orchestration of Halo 3's launch. Very yeah. Why, why have other publishers not been able to make that arrangement around well, the, around their AAA titles? I mean, I, I think it's starting to happen, and I think what you'll see with Grand Theft Auto 4 and with Metal Gear Solid 4 and the big games coming this fall, I think more and more event-style launches where, like the you know, it's it's in your mind, the public mind, that it's coming out, but it's a reason to buy that console. Like I expect GTA 4 to be the same price. A year from now, I expect Metal Gear Solid 4 to be the same price a year from now, and I expect, True. you know, Gears of War 2 to be the same price a year from now. There's no reason like you should expect like the qu the value of my game is instantly decreasing as soon as it comes out, and it's a race to get it into people's hands. What What's interesting about like Warhawk and what also Valve are doing is it's the equivalent of going into an auditorium and starting to tell a story and say. I'm going to tell the story as long as there's people here. And then mm -hmm. if everyone leaves the room, then you're done. But instead, you get more and more in, and then you start ramping it up. So it's like to that effect, Team but Fortress the 2. But the threshold of of when you walk away needs to be low. I mean, like with Lower. Warhawk, they were prepared to keep it pretty low. <laughs> that as long as there was a churn going through, it would be like, we're, we're going to stick with this, and hopefully people will keep coming. And they have. And start just... off with like... With whatever, you don't have to worry about building the entire game right now. So mm -hmm. that w that way, if it turns out that the majority of people are like, uh, you can you know you can improvise as you're telling your story. If you start hearing too many groans, you start tailoring your story to what the audience is, is sort of seemingly doing, like a comedy, um, like in, a comedy. In routine. TV, it's like and, um, Battlestar Galactica is a good example. It was on Sci-Fi, so it was never going to be huge numbers. Right. But Universal were prepared. They did the miniseries, and it did really well, and they did season one, and then they committed, and then it got to the point where they committed to finishing it. And it was like the, the, the threshold was because the, they knew they were going to be able to do the DVD sales, and there was it was it was different from the Fox model of, you know, if the crappy comedy right. with... Um, the dude that played Fraser in it is like it like bombs after two episodes. They just kill it, thank right. God. But you know, I mean, yeah. it, but that's the. But it's like this I mean, sort of long term. Well, like with an online game, you have to think long. And there are these new models, and like Warhawk is digital distribution, so that's part of it. And like with back to Capcom and Phoenix Wright, they just announced in Japan that the first three Phoenix Wright games are going to be available episodically on PCs and cell phones, so you can just buy like the first chapter for like five dollars and oh, try geez, it out. I would play it on a phone. And all of that should be on WiiWare, PSN, Xbox Live Arcade. Right right now like Absolutely. it's free money capcom you're missing out on it that is a really cool idea don't so, fuck it up by overpricing it like the classic example i just want to bring up because i'm still i'm still very angry and upset about it <laughs> nintendo remember when they released the namco classics or whatever yeah. nintendo classics for yeah. the game boy they're twenty dollars like, each twenty dollars each for yeah. and you had them in animal crossing for free i remember i yes. i have all of these games in a game i bought from you and you're asking me to spend twenty dollars each again mm. well then, i don't know if it's a news but the pricing came out for the uh penny arcade game is that a news or no, no. it's twenty dollars for the first chapter on xbox live arcade and everyone's like wow that's a lot of money like yeah that's a lot How, for uh, first chapter i don't know well i mean it's basically like it's the same in max guys it's basically 
basically like Sam and Max. Yeah, or Sam and Max. That, I mean, I'm, how much does it run? Is it the same? I just told you I don't trust Ryan's oh. taste. <laughs> <on> <laughs> Sam and Max. You don't, you don't, <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> you you buy you buy the you can buy the box set of season one, which I think is like a normal game, like thirty bucks or whatever. Yeah. But you don't pay per episode. You pay. You pay the subscription. Uh, oh, that makes sense. For this, so it's like a season pass kind of thing. Well, on Game Tap, it's just your monthly fee, which is just simple. Like, there, if What's you're the Game on a Tap street, fee? It's like seven dollars a month or something for the basic ten. membership. If, if, you, if or, you're in a swap meet aisle and there's like ten stands all selling like rip off Spider Mans, where he's like purple and pink <laughs> and shit, and you come in with a box of purple and pink Spider Mans, you don't say, "What are they charging?" Plus ten. <laughs> you like <laughs> you, you drop the price down to fucking shit, and then people can see why you're pink Spider Mans to illustrate them. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're purple Spider-Man that ruled. I've seen but, those, yeah, man. Hecho and Mexico. <laughs> I, I think there are a lot of new opportunities for publishers, third-party publishers in particular, because I do think first parties have done a better job of making their titles keep their value. If you look at what like Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft do, like those those games, like Resistance, it's still $40. Halo 3, it's still $50, $60, you know? To be fair, they've invested a lot they have. in it. Because, I mean, they're still running ads for Resistance 1. They you are. Still yeah. see they new ads, the time. yeah. But that's another thing, though. That's like what we're saying, supporting it and not, you know, having a higher threshold. Yeah, because that Area 51 game, with, like, within two months, it was $20, you know? It was. Uh, all right, so we got two giant early summer releases coming, Grand Theft and Metal Gear Solid. How do you think they're positioned right now? Which one of them looks best? Because I, you compared them to Halo 3, and I would well, say that— Which one is going to sell more copies? Can we, no. throw, can we throw a Wii game in there as well? Sure. Mario, Mario Kart. Kart. Sure, okay, so let's throw Mario Kart in there. I— not not one of those three games to me feels like it's in the same position anticipation wise Halo was when we were just a couple of months away. I think you're wrong. I think you're underestimating Grand Theft Auto. I think you're, really? under, I think yeah. you're underestimating all three of them actually. <laughs> I think the, the, uh, maybe this, some cynicism on G GTA is getting to fever pit and Mario Kart is just fucking crazy. Yeah, you with the to, install base now, that's my bet for the number geez, one. Series. Mario Kart is just going to be monstrous. It comes out the same day as GTA and day before. It, uh, day before. Day before. Sunday. And it, it might kick its ass. Think of that. I just was reminded. I mean, about that there's that plastic steering wheel you clip your thing in. And yeah. I know I want to do it, but imagine walking I'm into people's throw house. That, I'm throwing that shit away. on the bus, go round and round, round. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you just see all these yeah. fools. It's with totally like that. Hand. Have you seen uh, Totillo over on MTV Multiplayer Blog had a video of him getting to try it out like that? And it absolutely it is. Like. It seriously does actually look like that. Well, it's it, funny. It power uh, slides for you now, right? Yeah. So, I mean, like, if you're using the wheel, it's sort of. Wait, you don't have to hit the, the brake to. Yeah, to you're sort of influencing what he's doing as opposed to directly controlling him it's sort of you know Nintendo is oh. really good actually about launching their products because you know that you know that Sunday is the Nintendo day mm -hmm. I mean that is the Sunday Nintendo day look at the Sorry, fuss on I mean Smash Brothers I mean the fuss around the launch day on that there were and there were the tournaments there were people there were people at the San Francisco tournament driving down from Oregon to do mm -hmm. it because they wanted to play Smash Brothers early that's just amazing isn't it that's amazing because I, I don't even like it GDC <laughs> was the same way there was like you know that the one the North Hall and you go down there and GDC is generally not a place where you have a ton of people just congregating around one booth it's not E3 and yet they had Smash Brothers there and it just yeah. had mobs of well, like John, farmers John you should be really careful what you say about Smash Brothers I mean, I, I obviously don't know how to play it, um, <laughs> d despite having played the last one for over 40 hours. I, uh -huh. I obviously don't understand this title because I don't think it's the best fighting game ever made. <laughs> Shane, you also... Way better than Virtua Fighter or Street Fighter ever imagined being ever. Do you guys see why we don't let Shane post rebuttals on message boards? <laughs> no, but, I, you know, like, Smash fans can, can, can bite me, really. I thought there was some validity to that thing on the web yeah. this week where it was like, if this was anything other than Nintendo characters, it wouldn't have scored as highly as it did. I, I think? I... I yeah, exactly. <laughs> really? <laughs> Imagine that. There's some play for the characters. And I guess the only other thing to say here is that if you, if you want to see the effects of the opposite side, we had an interesting feature. Oh, wait, we didn't really kind of finish up the metal. We didn't talk about Metal Gear at all. Right. In the, in I, the Metal Gear GTA Mario Kart conversation. I mean, is that indicative of the fact that we just don't think it's going to do that well? Oh, it's going to do great. I think it's going to do really think well. you'll be really surprised. Everyone yeah. bought a PSP is like on their list for here's why I bought the, I mean, a PS3, rather. Yeah. Here's why I bought I it. I think it'll be a reason for people to buy a PlayStation 3 because GTA 4 isn't necessarily a reason to buy a PlayStation 3. You can buy you can play that on Xbox 360. Right. Well, I mean, people argue that with the uh, online play, you'd buy it on 360. There's no way in hell Metal Gear's coming to Xbox? No. I don't know you about know this? that. Is this I, that, word of bond, Ryan that. Payton type stuff? And the bundles, the bundles are day one bundle, right? <coughs> if you game. want that bundle, you better go pre-order it. Yeah. What bundle? 
The, the, it's a PS3 Metal Gear Solid. Oh, it's a really good deal because it's you, g- you get the you get you get 80 gig with backwards compatibility, which is hard to find these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does it and got like a plastic salt snake glued on it though? It does not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I think I think the you know the other thing. Did you see the uh, the special Grand Theft Auto 360s? The one that Mi- Microsoft had like 500 done that they send out to people like Mark Echo, and they're done in uh, car paint. And then mm-hmm. on the side, they have, like, the box cover done by, like, a professional. They look really slick. They look really slick. Check out Mark Echo's blog. There's a picture of one well, of them. Well, there's a rumor of a PS3 GTA 4. <laughs> <laughs> of, of what? Uh, Sorry. Mark, you Mark tell Echo's me to check out Mark Echo's blog, blog to see his console bling. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny cool, to me dude, the same way. Cool. That, like, before we start taping, you and John, you know, you, you have, like, this new DS, and you guys were, like, geeking out about how hot and stuff it was. And in my head, it's like you go to Toys R Us, and there's, like, the kids' TV aisle, and there's, like, Barbie TV, and it's, like, the screen is, like, in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like all that, that's all I see all these things as. It's like it started. I always refer to that Pikachu N64 because I saw that. Well, that thing's oh, that oh really my god! Every time they did it, that's all it, it's ever yeah. meant to me. They're just gluing some more shit saying, on there. There is a rumor that a, a month after GTA launches, that there'll be a PS3 bundle with GTA 4. Oh, really? That's a rumor. Huh. I think that would be a good idea. I mean, it makes sense. I I buy that GTA will be big. Maybe maybe I just don't feel it quite the same because we had so much hail we had so much have you seen the new coverage. trailer i mean like as the trailers awesome. are coming out for gta it's becoming like this thing's really really coming out well, there's another one this week right yeah and it's really here and like when these games become real and you realize wait this is real it's right. really here no i mean i personally am, am super well, excited for it like after reading our cover story or not cover story but our big you know story in it about mm-hmm. especially with the multiplayer well and i, I, was I like, gotta say Shit, this I, looks I think awesome. both gta 4 and the mgs4 have a lot more to prove and a lot, a lot more surprises in store than Halo 3 did. I think Halo 3, you knew what you were getting, and it was great, True. and it, it is what it is. And it these delivered. Games, and it delivered, but these games have a potential to really like push your expectations beyond. So it'll, I think it'll be, blow you away. Like, <laughs> like, again, just like as the week comes up, and then there will be like a million you know, videos on YouTube of people sh- un- unboxing it and everyone posting about how they got it, and then it will take off, and you'll be like, Oh yeah, it's that time of year again. Yeah. yeah, so to speak. I think Grand Theft probably faces more cynicism than Metal Gear, don't you? I think they both face. They really both do. A lot of cynicism, a lot of expectations, and the onus falls on these developers, these these creators, to to really prove themselves. And it, I think they will. I think it's gonna be really cool launches to watch because I like the point you just made, Sean, about the unboxing and people getting <laughs> hype about it. Unboxing. That that's gonna that's gonna make the the launch day, right? That's gonna make the launch experience. That's gonna be a big part of it is the people's response on yeah. the internet. Yeah. I like the I like the digital distribution version of that, and it's like when it seems more real to me when everyone like you're with your friends in Ventrilo or something, and then you're waiting for the the timer to click down for the unlock of a pre-download, and then you're all playing Episode Two, Half Life Two, Episode Two together or something. Oh, that's cool. Then you're just like, then it's like a social event, you know, like you're going, you know, you're waiting to watch the Super Bowl or something. Mm-hmm. I think one of the interesting things that's happening with GTA is like all the people that, and it's weird because Metal Gear is M rated as well, but mm-hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't have the stigma. But there's, there's a lot of kids that are like <coughs> plotting how they're well, going to get Grand Theft Auto. On, on, the oh, on the new trailer, it finally has its actual ESRB rating of mature with all the descriptors, and it's like descriptors I didn't even know existed. They, like, com- they gra- combined descriptors like, to make it like, fit. It's like graphic sex and smoking or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Did it say that? I mean, not that, but did it say graphic sex? It has no. It has, it has strong sexual it content. It has like seven descriptors. It has seven though. descriptors. Yeah. So they had to combine <laughs> alcohol and drugs into one descriptor big, to make it fit in the little. It's box. like graphic intense violence or something. It's one I had. Yeah. There's one I hadn't seen. I don't know. I'm excited. <laughs> sounds sounds intense. All right. So we have excellent we have excellent launches to watch. We'll, uh, we should reconvene. Is this a summer drought you were predicting? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Garnet, I heard you the <laughs> immense summer drought. No, no good games in summer. I'm Garnet Lee. Rah. After those two release, there is three. A, those three release, there's a couple of months period where there's not well, we fit out talent. the month after, which is a completely different kind we of like, monster there, hit. There are things in July and August that you're forgetting about as well. And September's huge. September is huge. What am I forgetting about in July and August? Uh, there are multiple titles. We won't get into it now. That's, it's such a cop-out. What's the latest for Left 4 Dead? They said September now. What? Madden. Madden. Okay. 20th anniversary August. Madden. Which, which packs, packs head coach in? Did you see that? That's a good idea. Uh, yeah. Nice. Oh, well, never. Spoiler. All right. So speaking of news, why don't we go ahead and take a little quick break. And when we come back on the other side, we'll hit the news. All right, we're ready to get into the news, and as a special bonus, 
during the break, Sean got a text. It's no, phone. yeah, it's no secret. I subscribe to both Reuters and Associated Press news feeds on my cell phone. And during the break, I got word of the announcement of Hasbro's Hasbro, and this is to be a fighting game, um, t- modeled after you know after Smash Brothers Brawl, and it's going to have you know Jason the Wheel Warriors characters, Mass Crusaders, those that worked overtime to fight crime, um, GI Joe. He-Man, Thundercats, it gets better. Uh, Tiger Sharks characters. I mean, so it's not going to be the entire about, rosters what, for all these shows, what about, but what about, uh, something what about, to represent. Uh, Visionaries, is that them? I didn't see that on no. there. They had holographic shields that turned into animals? They did. No, they had sectars, though. Did it say Did it say whether they're releasing it as a GameCube game that they can then re-release as a Wii game, or are they just going straight to Wii? No, this is going straight to Wii, and it's going to be like DLC, so that they're going to be able to add characters from their various toy lines and Sweet. then update it as well. So did you I'm, say Jason and the Wheeled Warriors? Jason and the Wheeled Warriors. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That was that a long time ago. <laughs> That's just mad old. All these other kids want to hear about what, what, the, about, the what about the Teenage in, Mutant What about Ninja the Turtles? Inhumanoids? That was a good show. Did you watch that one? I remember that, too. That he, I had, I had some one. of those toys. Some of those? That's why I'm looking forward to it. All right, moving right along. Next week on Cartoon. There's, uh, there's a finishing move where you can like set them all. You d- douse them in gasoline and shoot them with BB guns. <laughs> 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 That's the, the <laughs> Not doused in gasoline nor shot with BB guns, but nevertheless on his way out is the EA CFO. Um, this is an interesting development. Warren Jensen, he's leaving after six years with the company, and no, it's not especially interesting that he, well, the CFO, is leaving itself. Analysts evidently have seen this coming. John, have you been keeping up with any of this? Is this related to the Take Two situation? And the fact that it's old John Riccatello's deal? Yeah. <clears throat> So this I is think, yeah. And that Take Two continues to fight it day by day, like yeah. sending out like a perspective like we we can make all this money on Look, all GTA these is going to be really huge, guys. Please, please don't buy us. Yeah, so I mean clearly Jensen uh, had a different vision for where the financial future <laughs> of the Which company Which involved lie. maybe not buying Take Two. <laughs> yeah, at some outrageous price. So but th- it's coming to a head this whole hostile takeover. It is coming to a, to a head and once again Take Two has advised their uh, shareholders to not accept the uh, opportunistic bid as they de- uh, describe it. You know what? <laughs> not gonna happen. What's not gonna happen? People turning it down. I think it's, it's gonna. It's, it's gonna go. I through. think it's gonna happen. There's no way it's not going through before GTA comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, are you it, serious? It won't be complete. Your third eye seen it coming before it happened. That's what I've heard. All right. Everyone I've spoken to <laughs> at both companies talks with a sort of inevitability about this. A fatalistic Yeah, yeah there's, there's like a, a resignation to it. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, we're going to have to go through all these integration shit wow. and whatever, and, you know, it's... I mean, so I, guess, I guess anything can happen. Right. But, uh, but you yeah. know... Well, in the latest turn, our board. This is a statement from Take Two. Our board, after careful review, has unanimously determined that Electronic Arts' offer consti- continues to provide insufficient value and remains opportunistically timed to capture the value of the upcoming Grand Theft Auto 4 launch at the expense of our stockholders. Jeff, Jeff packed his quote where he basically went, "Fools!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had that last week, actually. But yeah. I, I mean, I think there's a. I think there's a valid argument there. The the unfortunate thing is with where the. St- I think what will make this go through is the uncertainty in the stock market right now because there will be a number of investors that look at this and say you know what bird in the hand two in yeah. the bush we ever going to get this price right right whereas i think if we were still seeing a you know an advancing market people would say you know what they're right grand theft auto 4 is gonna be huge the stock is going to shoot up after that why should i give up for 26 but right now giving up for 26 is not giving up it's like taking a taking yeah, a nice i game. think the smart ones are saying okay well gta is going to be huge but what you got after that they're like, we can make Bioshock into an MMO right. in five <laughs> years, maybe not. All right, Sean, I'm going to turn the, turn this over to you for a second because you have a little update on what Punk Buster has been doing to scan our, but this scan is, our memories. Yeah, dude. Uh, Andrew, do you have the source on there? I sent you. Basically, long story short, they're allegations, but all the evidence that they're presenting seems to, to show them as being, you know, pretty much fact that, you know, what Punk Buster is an anti cheat provides the most, you know, prominent. Most commonly used anti-cheat provide, uh, I mean anti-cheat prevention system for, for for PC games, and what what happens is that when you run it, it scans your physical memory. So it's a, and it's not only that, but it's extracting and recording, you know, all this information, including passwords, credit card information, and stuff potentially. So a number of virus scanners do consider Punkbuster as as you know a virus or a Trojan or something. So that's why. That's the legal ground. I think the people that post on this forum, and we'll, ha- we'll have this, you know, source for you soon. Um, they're a legal ground for basically reverse engineering Punkbuster, saying that because it's coming up as a Trojan, this is why they're able to do it. And they're finding all this stuff, and they're showing, you know, they're they're showing, you know, 
where it's happening and they run all these tests to the point that Punkbuster will, there are certain like number, specific number strings that it will pick up in your computer. And if they're anywhere in your computer, it doesn't even matter. Even if it's like your credit card number, it'll count as a cheat and then they'll, they'll brick your game. So if you got COD4 and you're playing and somehow this happens, then you got to buy another game to get another code. But it works to, this, to a point that in their experiments, they started plugging in these number strings in people's IRC channels and stuff. And even its presence there will get picked up and then ban their, their there's copy. No way to there's no way to disable it. Well, for these games, you can. You don't have, like, say, for example, COD4, you don't have to run it with Punkbuster enabled, okay. but you're not going to find good luck finding a server that's going to let you play. Okay. You might have just a few. So this comes from uh, <laughs> forum.netcoders. Forum .netcoders so is Punkbuster um, pretty pervasive? I mean, a lot of games have this. Oh, it's the most widely used. It's in every you know, Ubisoft game, right? They use it in all the, all the Tom Clancy games. Just about everything does, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm used to, you know, Battlefield did, and I mean, just. Every time you get an online game, so have they responded to a lot of false po false positive cheats bricking games. Basically, They're, the thing was is the, what started these guys, according to the post. What what sent them on this this you know route is that Punkbusters representatives are really snide when they would send emails like, "Hey, this was unfair. I got blocked out," and then they just go, they characterize Punkbusters' response as "Fuck you, you cheated." And you're lying. You can't prove it. So they're like they went on this quest to prove otherwise, and this is what's come out of it. Wow. So it, it's it's worth looking into. It's interesting. Also on the uh, going after cheaters tip this week, uh, Microsoft has decided to take action against certain individuals on the live service who have been cheating to get their gamer scores pumped up. Like Dan Shu. <laughs> Shu doesn't cheat, man. He's just a, he is. He just plays shitty ass games exactly. to get the points. <laughs> he, he's totally a whore for it. So uh, this was this came up over on I saw it on Gamer Score blog. N guy has a great interview where he got to talk to. Uh, one of the one of the Xbox Live guys, which I'm not seeing here, real quickly. Oh, he talked to uh, gener Live General Manager Mark Witten, and so here's here's basically what they're doing. The offenders that they found have had their have had all of their gamer score reset to zero, so they've forfeited all those achievement points, and those are forever lost. They can never go back and re-earn them again. And the point that I really think is funny is that their gamer card has been emblazoned with a tag that says they've been caught stealing. How funny would it be to like be like playing with some dude and you like looked up on, looked him up on you know as a bit of card the scarlet said. letter. I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> so wait, you can't they can't get the, so they can't go back. So they got all the achievements in Bioshock. Right. They get wiped. They it can won't, not go it back. won't log Bioshock on that profile. What do you mean? It, so like if they go back and play Bioshock again, it just won't get it won't, won't enable right. it won't let they them have the be, points. They will not be able to get the points for those. That, but the, the points I think I think probably the way it works is that the How points the points have been removed, but the achievements probably still show. Uh, a life without achievements barely worth living. Oh, it's so sad. How do they so cheat sad. to get these in the first place? Um you know, they're not real clear about this, but evidently it has something to do with altered game saves. Mm. And it's it, they're couching the whole thing in number one, violations of terms of service agreement, and that they have an investigation team and unless the investigation investigation team finds 100% all the you know, checks that they would go through. How do you how do you feel about that, that there's an investigation team that it's exists creepy. to it make sure you don't <laughs> lie about the size of your EP? <laughs> yeah. That's that's pretty sad. It all seems a little much. You think? <laughs> it's like hiring yeah. a yeah. Hiring a SWAT I think it's a little intense. Hiring it's a like, SWAT team to get the funny money exactly, back. Exactly. Well, you man. You have <laughs> lied about the length of your EP. <laughs> it's <laughs> like if it was if it was cheating to get Microsoft points to acquire shit, right. then fine. But this is just your gamer score. It's funny money. Funny money. It's dude. like stealing from the bank in in a in playing Monopoly with yourself. I'm calling the police. You, know, cares. you got the, money. I'll Good for this. you. On the other hand, it shows how seriously they treat the fact that achievements have become a really big thing. Yeah. We had an, we had an opportunity to talk to uh, Aaron Greenberg, who's the in charge of both Xbox hardware and live. He's like the head honcho on that. Um, that interview is going to go up on Monday, Andrew. But he was talking about this. And he, he mentioned, you know, achievements have become such a big part of the identity of people online that the fact that there are cheaters out there really bugs people. You know, mm -hmm. it really gets under their skins. It's like, you know, what? I worked really hard to get like shoe shoe. It sits there. He, he works really hard. He plays those fool games to get those points, yep. and it means something to him. So the fact that it doesn't really mean anything to me, and I remember when it did. It did actually mean it's something. It's true. To me. If I went online and saw someone with all the jumper stuff, I assume they actually suffered through jumper. So and and Microsoft. And if they didn't, you feel cheated. I feel very cheated because I did. Microsoft is saying that they'll be willing to let people come back and and start earning points again, and that uh, the, they're a little mysterious about this. And the answer that uh, Mark Witten gave to N guy just says that. They, that they intend to remove the label over time 
Um, but they don't really have a specific time frame. Why what don't you just be. kill the profile and start a new one? What if you had that? That's a good question. You got your Alcoholics <laughs> Anonymous two-week coin revoked at the same <laughs> the same week that they did that to you. <laughs> Jesus, dude. <laughs> That's just wrong. Over on the consumerist, on 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 an even more annoying Xbox Live tip. Over on the consumerist, um, one of their readers wrote in to say that he's been able to get Microsoft to authorize his new hard drive with his old stuff, so he doesn't have to be connected to Live to play the games that he had bought through Xbox Live. So long long story short is that it, you know he had to complain enough to get it done, but it took 20 days. 20 days. I'm not clear on, on exactly what he did. So remember that if you change your hard drive yeah. in order to play your arcade games, you have to be connected to the internet in order for it to dial back to home base and say, oh, yes, you're allowed to play that because their DRM is connected to, to the hardware to the hardware and to the serial number, mm -hmm. right? And they always said that you can't get that, that there was no way they could fix that. They just can't get it fixed. They can't work around it. Well, the truth is evidently now they can work around it, and it takes a long time. Why it would take 20 days to fix is a mystery. I mean, all you're doing is flipping a switch, right? You would think. Some kind of cut and paste thing. Just this guy just hassled the crap out of them for 20 days? Well, the key was that when, when he got to the point of saying, you know what, I don't want to have to be connected, I'd like you to issue me points, because for a while that was their solution. Their solution was if you complained enough, they would give you points equivalent to what you had purchased and let uh -huh. you repurchase it. That was when they conceded and said, okay, just uh, let, let us fix this. We'll fix this. And evidently, like 20-something days later, they leave him a message and say, oh, it's been all resolved. All you have to do to fix it now is go into your Blade and re-download the games that you had, and they'll be fine. And they are. So it's fixed. So evidently, they have a process now to get it. But it's not something they were saying people should do. Right. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying is Microsoft should just go ahead and nut up and they take care of everybody who changes hard drives this way because the whole thing has just been who, biting Who really buys a hard drive? It's pretty expensive. But doesn't but, the re-download thing... But replacement. Thing if oh. you get a replacement box because you rent Red Ring, true. because that's how this happened to this guy. I thought the re-download the re thing was profile-based. It is, but when the, when the internal serial numbers don't match... So Aaron was talking about this. Remember, Andrew, we were asking him why the damn hard drives are so expensive, and he was saying that part of what's in the hard drive is the, uh, is the DRM. So the DRM's built into the hard drive. Well, that's why it costs $180. Uh, well, see? that's one of the reasons, whatever. Future tech from space. So I, I'm just shocked that on PS3 it's so easy. I, I, to the point where I just take it for granted. That you just log in on any PS3 and say, I want to play Warhawk. So you start downloading it, because, and it knows you've already bought it, and it just lets you, it just associates it with, as long as you're logged in with the same email address and password, any box, you can download it a bunch of times. I don't really understand why they took their DRM quite so far down that hallway. Anyone? It doesn't make it, it's something that's pissed people off from day one, especially it's cheesy to me. Especially when you combine it with the red ring, because the red ring was causing people to have to send their stuff in, and when you got it back, you're like, shit. If I'm not, I mean, what if your internet's down? I mean, I, my internet goes down every so often. I'm not necessarily guaranteed to get your own box back. But you, I, I think a lot of people don't get their own box back, right? I don't know. I don't. Anyway, it's dumb. If there's a way for them to do it now that they can, I think they should just switch over and just say, you know what, we're sorry we did it the other way. That was that was then, this is now, we're fixed. Mm -hmm. What isn't fixed is multiplayer online on the PS3, which continues to have problems. Um, this time it's been on Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Story over on Joystick pointed out that a number of users over the uh, Easter weekend, while evidently uh, Ubisoft's technical support was also on vacation, were unable to get connected, and, and on the few times that they were able to connect connected, they were facing really horrible lag. And it seems like it's just one of those cases where the game was originally maybe designed on 360 and they didn't do enough work on the PS3 online. Seems likely. When Microsoft buys Ubisoft, <laughs> then this won't be a problem anymore. <laughs> and every, everyone laughs, laughs, laughs. That's your new working theory? Ubisoft bought by Microsoft? Not a bad idea, don't you think? Uh, yeah. Do you think Do you think Microsoft really wants to run a game studio, that an organization <laughs> that big? Well, they, they, need, they need some game studios. <laughs> they do need some, don't they? Um, on the WiiWare, Final Fantasy is going to uh, be releasing a single race. One race. Well, okay, so One speci race. specifically, this is the WiiWare Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles My Life as a King. Right, which is? A town-building simulator based in the Crystal Chronicles world. That for 15 bucks. 
you get one of the four races. And the other three races and additional <laughs> costumes will be available for additional money. Dude, that thing's going to get expensive fast. So was it's like Hobo Hotel for Final Fantasy? Kind of. And, I mean, they announced a few weeks ago that, like, some things would be pay-to-play. But we didn't quite expect them to be quite so pay-to-play so quickly. And, and the other th- the stuff isn't available yet. So no, someone, no one knows what the full price is going to be to get have all the races. Seen, have you seen the game? I haven't seen it in motion, but I've you know, seen screenshots. And, right. You know, it, it's the best looking of the WiiWare titles that are out for sure. But I think the pricing is a little a little higher than people expected. A little more, you know, nickel and dime. So how much is it again? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars for one for of four. one of four races. Yeah, it's it's an early indicator that that the same sort of uh, let's play around with the economy of the marketplace is going to happen on WiiWare as it did with Xbox Live. I mean, people are going to they're going to see how much they can charge. And they've still not addressed the whole getting stuff onto the Wii and well, what you're saving you, it to and transferring. You, and you can save them onto SD cards. You can't load them from SD cards. Yeah. And the games take about 30 seconds to a minute to transfer to the SD card depending on the size. Though right now, if you bought all nine titles that are out in Japan, it would fill your Wii's internal memory almost to capacity. Okay. So you're definitely going to be have to you have to storing them on SD cards, or you you can do you can delete it and then re-download it because the Wii also remembers that your account bought that game. Oh wow! So what you, a, what you a con- do that. You, you know, Microsoft. It's a sad day when Nintendo's online service has some <laughs> shit figured out that you don't. But that's there is, a really there, sad there is day. no like good storage solution for Wii. So right now, what you'd have to do is then make so basically you have you can take a game's portable, you can download it, but when you want to get it off your console, you can put it on an SD card and then in the, and copy then, it back and then yeah. copy it back. That's yeah. kind of a pain in the neck. I need to get over that. Because it, ex- it can't execute something off an SD card? Right. Right. Okay. And EA hasn't been shy about charging us for things either. The latest thing to uh, get on people's radar is the paid weapons that will be in Battlefield Bad Company. There was a lot of concern over how that might also affect the... You know, the first concern in a competitive game is, will those weapons be overpowered? So one of the steps EA took this week was to assure people that that the game... that the that the guns that will be for purchase won't have any competitive advantage over the ones that people don't then purchase. Then why would you buy them? Well, because they look cool. I don't know. I mean, I, that is kind of silly, isn't it? See, I get I get pay for weapons in a free game. When the, when the core is free, like the the carding thing in Korea and that, that whole Korean, like, you know, you get out of it what you put into it, but the baseline is free. Mm-hmm. But charging extra on a... I mean, we've probably done this over and over, but charging extra on a sixty-dollar game just seems Bonk. it's for something that you don't actually get any benefit out of. Well, I mean, so let's be honest. There'll be a benefit. Think about think about your weapons right now in Rainbow Six. You know, you have different parameters for each of the weapons. So what they're saying is, you won't have a competitive advantage. Means that if you balanced all the things out, it'll be the same. But you might have a gun that works really well for your play style, whether it's be penetration yeah. power, <coughs> accuracy, or whatever in, that you have to buy. Mm-hmm. There's reason to take that those kind of claims with a grain of salt, and that's like the same thing with, with Battlefield Two at the time. Now this seems basic, but it was controversial that you could unlock weapons at all. Because right. it, and then it kind of happened. It was the same argument was introduced to consoles with CD4, and that's are the unlockables. Even though you're not buying them, are they better? But when Battle, you know, when when Dice and EA said the same thing, it's just different. It's not, you know, it's like separate but equal thing. But it's not. But equal. in the long run, it turned it out. It turned out that no, some of the unlocks were were fucking way better than than the standard loadouts, you know? Or they, they were, like, they, they the role that they fulfilled was totally different and otherwise unavailable. Yeah, it'll be the same so way with this, unfortunately. It's like, yeah, it, that's always like, I'll see it when I believe it. I Which is why it's so cool that on the other end of the spectrum, you've got guys like Epic who do this tournament map pack for Unreal 3 that's just come out for both PC and for PS3, and it's completely free. Mm-hmm. Ship to ship yesterday, right? It has remakes yeah. of classic. And it has, oh, what? Yeah. I actually remember one of the, 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 the face, what is it called, like Facing Worlds? Or that's, I, dude, remember that's what the, it's I remember that map from back in the day. Come on, that's like, that is so <laughs> classic, classic yeah. Unreal 3. And it's cool that they, you know, that they're just like, yeah, and we got to take care of, no big deal. We're going to take care of our fans. It's weird. They know that putting those things in as unlockables based on, on player achievements work so well and that incentivizes people to play games like sometimes it makes games a lot better than they actually are when you take that you know when you take that out of the equations like they know that that works with their own games as well 2142 and stuff it's like why not just do that why why don't you unlock those why why do you have to buy them well why do why would they make it so that you could buy cars that you could unlock and need for speed same thing. It's yeah. dumb. But the, hey, the long run, it's hey, like, look, it, look what it's done for COD and for Battlefield as well. Both of those games sold millions of copies and people played for, like, Battlefield. Fucking, they're still playing it, you I mean, know, by the thousands, thousands. I think my favorite EA DLC was the fact you could buy money in The Godfather. You could, like, spend <laughs> Man, money. Right. You could that spend fake funny. space bucks to buy fake space bucks. Anyway, yeah. so... <laughs> 
the other cool thing about it being we need to find those people actually let's do I'll, I'll write I'll fucking personally write a story about you if you're one of those people I want to know all about it <laughs> he, he, <laughs> Make a thread he gets a form. gleam in his eye when he says that he's like I'll write that story I'll I'll write yeah, how do you feel when you're story. clicking that button on your on your controller like yeah, I want to buy some some money with well, this, my money I just like stories of like <laughs> self-incrimination so yeah. I'll find something to do with it so of course the especially cool thing about the Unreal Tournament 3 map pack being free is that everybody's going to have it if they're online I mean there's no reason for them not to right so it's got uh, it's got you said facing worlds that's in there another classic that's in there is morbius and then they have a brand new map that's called searchlight which is designed for capture the flag thanks thanks epic i'm sure we'll be seeing more stuff from you also you see that uh, nice master chief character model for <laughs> which is really that, funny it looks pretty good it's awesome it looks a pretty good model yeah. it's really well done and it, i guess microsoft thinks it's cool yeah, because they didn't cock block it. Yeah, they didn't cock block it at all. They're like, they're like, yeah, it looks cool. Well, the so, deal, the deal there was, as long as they're not charging for it, we don't mind, right? Wasn't that the official word? I, you know, I we had that story. I didn't read through most of it. Ironic, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. ironic. That's how it's <laughs> always gone. Just like there's Half Life, there's there's like Halo remakes based on the the you know Half Life Two engine and stuff. And mm -hmm. then just right now, this week announced, they'll throw in an extra news bit, a uh, Mech Warrior mod for. Uh, based on Crisis. Oh, wow. So there's a video up, and it looks pretty cool. But again, MechWarrior, don't have to worry about license because they're not going to make any money off it. And, but they're using all the schematics and diagrams from the... That's pretty cool. Another game that uh, we saw and then didn't see because Sega asked us to take the screens this down. This was maybe the biggest leak I've seen in five years. It was a crazy leak. It's like... It's it was a crazy leak. Bad leak. So there was a lot. Did you see the screens before they came down? See the video? I saw the video, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic Unleashed, the new next-gen, like, the next Sonic reboot. Th this time, he's not going to fuck a woman, you know? Like, uh, that's, that's... <laughs> wow. Uh, that's, that's the pitch this time. <laughs> <laughs> this time, he won't have sex with a human woman. We he, guarantee it. He's back to... That's their main audience at this point, though, man. <laughs> turn People them who marry Sonic that you're talking well, about? Well, just the no. freak show. I will so say, that's what like, the tagline is. Sonic's got No, it's, it's not the tagline. The tagline is, the hedgehog is back, but he's not fucking any chicks. We're making fun, but like if you watch this, it's hard to find the video now. It's out there somewhere, but it looks to be more of a return to what people want from old oh, school yeah, Sonic. Absolutely. Like part of the video is is, is 2.5D force perspective. It looks like wow, this is this reminds me of old school Sonic the Hedgehog, and Doctor Robotnik is back to being like kind of a cartoony guy, not a realistic person. Oh yeah, you know like. The speed was there. It's fast. It yeah. looks like but it's it just looks like like you know the World War Two base game previews. It just feels like I'm reading the same goddamn story every time. Yeah. It's like every time there's a new Sonic game, I just remember everyone's like, here here's hoping and here's reason to believe right. that they're gonna turn it all around. And every time the game comes out, and I just glance you know through and I see the same like sixes and you know. Well, I never said that about Dark Sonic. As soon as I saw Dark Sonic and that was the one. I mean, I I have cool. played. And reviewed every Sonic, every Sonic game. I mean, I've played every Sonic game ever, probably. And I've reviewed every Sonic game now, last, springs eternal. for the last eight years. And, you know, <laughs> fool me once, fool me ten times. But it was the tenth time. This is th this marks what? The tenth this time? Is, this is something. I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll try it again. And based on initial impressions, look, it looks better than last time. But <laughs> it always does. Always That's <laughs> my point, dude. But it never is. Yeah, I mean, when the but last no, I don't think like, it always the last, does. The last Sonic game, Sonic the Hedgehog for Xbox 360 and, and PS3. I remember when I went to Sega to play it, and they sat me down. They're like, "Complete reinvention. Everything is different. Throw out everything you know from the last five Sonic games." I sat down. I played it. I played it for 20 minutes. I played three levels, and I went to the bad person. I was like, "It's the same game. It really, <laughs> like, I mean, really, like, it's the same game. I'm falling off the same edges." Except you can tap humans. You can tap humans this time, but it's the same fucking game you've been making for 10 years. <laughs> You just told me it's a different game. It's the same game. So, this so we'll see. judging <laughs> by the video re leak release of this, it, well, it looks you don't think it's the same. It, it's the same. You know, so how do you? That's I, what I'm saying. How does it go back to its roots when well, it's been when it's never changed? There's a lot of Force 2D this time, which is which which is cool. <laughs> never I, left. <laughs> I, I like the Force 2D and I like the return to the old designs and the graphics look better, but. I still, have a, you know, until I get my hands on it, I'm afraid it's the same game. We'll I see. think yeah. I think it did leave, and I think that's why we're Sonic. I also on. think somebody at Sega got their fucking ass handed to them this week. My God, can you imagine? When, you, when it was, was it supposed it was, to so come it was out? It was like a cover story. For no, Sonic? no. Apparently, it was sitting on Sega's PRFTP site, like, and the file basically said. Click here for a new Sonic game or something along well, those I mean, lines. And <laughs> I, I believe they probably do have a cover coming out very soon somewhere that was compromised. So we'll see. Yeah, I bet you have your theory as to which cover it is, too. I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't. I don't really. Well, it's the first I've even heard of this game getting unleashed, and I already got a theory as to where it's going to be. It might have been the place that gave the last Sonic a nine point five out of ten. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, I, I, I got a theory. I got a theory that that. Well, I got a feeling that theory might play. Yeah. 
we'll surprise. We'll see. Well, Sonic's in a really weird spot because, like, he's still popular. Well, Kids love him. So, so I mean, you know, I, I was talking to someone at Sega that said they do. They've done research on Sonic because you know they're they're very aware that it's that it's that it's stayed. So they did research around Sonic as a franchise, and then they did research around Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. And all the all the research around Sonic was it's getting old. It's the same thing over and over. It's you know too many characters. Too you know it's just like all bad. And then they do this, this, ask the same questions to the Mario and Sonic audience. Like Sonic is cool and he's hip and he's like it's all the stuff that you would hear ten years ago about right. Sonic because it's I love but, his tune. But they've sold <laughs> six million copies of Mario and Sonic now. What? Yeah, it went, six million. It went, from, it went from three to six. Yes. Oh wow. man. Holy Jesus. Jesus. And worldwide, it's something just phenomenal. <clears throat> well, like the in fact Europe, that it's selling like crazy. That they're making that MMO based on it. MMO? It might accidentally, well, the fact that there's a the theory that someone's making an MMO based well, on well, it. Is I mean, BioWare is making that DS game, <laughs> and, we, yeah. and we've seen it. And, like, I want to believe that this BioWare Sonic game is going to be good, but at the same time, do I, do I really want to hear Amy Rose talk to Cream the Rabbit? Like, not really. Like, no. Well, the I, RPG, I, right? I, yeah. Not an MMO. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not so, eight. But that's why there's, like, knowledge huge, there. <laughs> that's, like, they, someone must have got metrics on, like, all those sites that I normally make fun of. And there's it's probably more than just, like, ten well, freaks oh, with, like, ten different aliases. Sonic is huge, dude. There's got to be a lot still of those huge. people. It still sells. Sonic is huge because a lot of people cling to their love of the mascot. But I, I still say that you you were saying that it never left, but I think it did leave. I think it left when, when it got caught in the 3D world and they felt compelled wow. to keep trying to make a 3D well, Sonic, and it didn't work. because they it did it right. One Sonic on the Dreamcast Yeah, was Sonic awesome. Adventure. But by, but by, that was an that no, was, but like by Sonic Adventure right. 2, I was there. I mean, I've been there the whole time. I've been a Sonic fan since the day it came out in 1991 in June. And like by Sonic Adventure 2, I could tell like they were already rehashing. They were adding new characters. They were adding new gameplay styles yeah. that weren't fun. And it, really, Sonic Adventure 1 was the that last, was it. The Sonic last Adventure good was Sonic game. was the last game. one I yeah. played. I was yeah. like, it wasn't that bad. I mean, the it Sonic, had a shitty camera, the Sonic, but it the was Sonic Advance games, Sonic Rush games, pretty good. I mean, they're very old school. They're rehashes. Which was the one that had the killer whale or whatever? That was, that was that Sonic Adventure. Adventure 1. Yeah, the final boss. Everything mm -hmm. since Sonic Adventure 1 has been downhill. No argument because they kept trying to iterate on it. John, you lost uh, you lost quite a few hours to Bethesda's last game. Uh-oh. How worried are you about how many hours you might lose to Fallout 3? Because I can't wait. 200 endings. <laughs> yeah, so Shock News uh, has a little transcript from the official Xbox Magazine podcast where uh, they were speaking with the uh, Fallout 3 executive producer, Todd Howard, and here's what Howard said. He says, being that we are Bethesda, everything gets a bit big. So as of last week, we're over 200 endings. That's not an exaggeration. What I also thought was interesting was that they said that even though the game that they got they're following the GTA approach to design that rather than have keep making the worlds bigger and bigger and bigger they're keeping them a little more compact but putting more shit into them more possibility and more possibility system. within the world that you have so the, the right. buildings all have more rooms in them and everything everything is much sort of like more viable so just the idea that there's this is like very believable environment that and, you're going to be able to spend and, that much time and, uh, in. You know, when other people tell me 200 innings, I'm like, oh, those innings are going to be terrible. But like, I actually almost believe it this time because when they first showed us this game, we talked about it on the podcast before. The thing they showed us was here's an entire city you can choose to destroy at the beginning of the game, and like, here's what happens if you do it. Here's what happens if you don't. And like, it was real and it really happened. All these people died, and it wasn't it wasn't fake. You know, <laughs> it wasn't just like a showpiece. So man, maybe they can really pull and this the off. way they, they're going to branch should. stuff with if characters are gone, they're gone. You know, what's, I mean, what's going to happen is someone is going to try to save at every critical juncture. They're going right. to find, get the manual and they're going to well, try to have a game state that, right? where they can find every single one. And they are. And it, but it's a funny a funny turn of mind for gamers. And it was like, you know, I was talking to Warren Spector about Deus Ex and about, you know, when you make a, a level with branching paths, there's this fixed set that you're like, okay, we could do three or four, usually three or fewer because what happens is that instead of just saying, I'm aware that there are five things I can do now. I'm just going to do this and, and, and see come what may what happens. People will try to go down one and it's the equivalent of like, you know, leaving a string of, you know, a, a string behind you and then go back and run up as far down it the is. other path as they can and go back down the other one. And then when they've kind of like looked a little bit into each one, they'll go and feel like it really they have cheapens, to. But we just the experience. Yeah. It's like, why is it a, lo a lot of gamers can't just say, What's related to the I'm doing this conversation we had about consequences. Like people don't want the consequences of their actions. They want to be able to go back and redo it and find the best path. But you own the exactly. game, you can go back and play it. Right. I mean, 
if you, anyway. I, I, I like I, I like what Bethesda's doing here because I think that since we know that we know the world is actually smaller than the Oblivion world geographically, I think what you said making it more compressed, more dense is going to make this. What is make this it, ship? You think it's really going to come out this fall? I don't. I don't. I don't. No. What would you like prefer though? That if there were ten, you know, substantially different outcomes, or that there were two hundred that were only like marginally different, that were more or less just like. See, I'd I rather have shade ten fleshed same. out, ten really fleshed out. I'd really have 10 yeah, I would out have ten because I like. I like. Remember when we were all playing Indigo Prophecy at the same time? And everyone, and that before it went to shit. Before, it, well, yeah, but we were all playing through it, and we were, we were, we started at the same time. We all finished within like a day of each other, and we were all talking about what happened in specific scenes. And there were probably only ten to a dozen variations on certain things, but there were whole chunks that some of us didn't see, and it, and it was enough that it was if you were in a community of people talking about it, then you all had common threads of experience where you're like, well, when you got there, I did this, and then this happened. When it's two hundred outcomes. That the means th the threads leading to the 200. I mean, how how many paths? I mean, there's, there's going to be. We weren't even playing the same game. That, like, I just did it so thought. utterly, utterly differently <laughs> from you that we have no shared experiences apart from the fact that we were running after our dad. I think that'd be awesome. That would be pretty I don't think awesome. It, I don't think it'll really be that way, though. I think the 200 endings will be, you know, <laughs> and I got 25 that are kind of similar. <laughs> ending to 150 through 200 is that you're given an award, and then the award differs by a single monetary unit. Right. So 100 <laughs> gold, 101 gold, 102 gold. I mean, that could be that there's like 25 different w women for you to marry, you know, and like that affects the arrow, something yeah. like that, you know? We'll see. I don't know. I, I just like the idea of the being really fleshed, like, particularly with the way that the game looks, to have... Like ten to a dozen, that's like very flesh. That would agree. be much more rewarding. I agree, but it's sometimes I really like a good narrative, and certainly Resident Evil Four gave us that. Was really, I mean, I, was I really don't think Resident Evil Four had a very good narrative. I think for the you didn't think it was fun. It I was that, really fun. I think that for the franchise, it had one of the better told stories. But Resident Evil yeah. was a great, but, game, it was, but it wasn't because the narrative yeah, was. Resident yeah. Evil, dude, the story was fun. It was Resident fucking Evil hilarious. Storytelling, not its strong. Story. I was surprised. Oh, I thought that it was the funny. I thought it was though, fun because I'm playing it on Wii now, and I was surprised, like you know, Louis Sarah and stuff. It's like the voice acting did, wasn't horrible at all. No, it's not horrible. Well, like, you buy it. Dude, no, no. Different. Not that. Well, that that's okay. No, I mean, that's I think, the sale. Let, I me, think, let me put it in the context. I think it's the best Resident Evil ever had. Okay. I'll give you that. That's but compared to actual good stories, Resident Evil 4 does oh. not have one. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, it's, it is, like, it's fun. Of, it's campy. Well, there's yeah. a creepy midget. And he's yeah, like, he's, he's got a robot. Somehow he lives <laughs> in a, cancel, a castle, and he's got like a Stone Age robot of himself yeah. that's there to raise and lower a bridge. Now tell me that is not fucking awesomely hilarious. <laughs> no, it, it's funny. It's all campy. It's tongue in cheek. But you kind of imagine that Resident <laughs> Evil could be more. And RE5 looks like more serious. This I is, hope, this is what I'm curious about. Yeah, uh, RE5, and there's a video. Let's try that to was, tie back that in. That's where I was going. There's a video that just came out. And the crazy thing for me is playing RE4 again and absolutely loving it. I love, that, yeah, we all I, love, we all love RE4. Year. It's awesome. But it's like, <laughs> if they're going to do, I'm, I'm trying, imagine the equivalent of that. What was that Salazar? Right. That little piece of shit. Imagine the equivalent of like a 50 foot Salazar in this like African setting. You know I mean? Like it, it doesn't fit. What are they going to do? But yeah. at the same yeah. time, the game, tough. they base their scenarios and their puzzles and their level design on the assumption that you're in some ridiculous, like mad, you know, creeps castle and that there's all these stupid things that happen and you need to pull all these switches to get all these things. Like what happens when you're like, if it's in wherever it's supposed to be. Africa. Yeah, I, I wanted to be. I know it's supposed to be in Africa, but more specific. Like, is it Rwanda or, right, or right. some kind of thing like that? You know, and, and then all of a sudden you go down in some subterranean cavern, and then you get the usual. Then you have to shit. Car carve the medallion <laughs> and fit it in the ser serpent's face. Dude, no, it's like, well, like the it's dragon boats. You know, there's shit. like the dragon yeah. boats on these giant hooks, and they come to breathe fire. Like, who made that? Like, we're gonna spend. All right, I got like slave labor. We're gonna spend like 50 years making these. This is an RE4. This right. is Salazar, <laughs> Spanish <laughs> slave labor. Yeah. So we're gonna spend it and make these these giant things to spit fire in case someone tries to turn this knob fuck and yeah. this pathway. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Yeah, like RE5, because, because, of, the setting, because yeah. of the setting, because of the setting, I expect it to be a little more serious. And I'll be disappointed if the voice acting and story is, and puzzles are all ludicrous. Dude, I yeah. will be so disappointed if it is, <laughs> because I want it to be Resident Evil. I want it to be Resident Evil, because that's, I want more, that's I want more, what makes it fun. I believe that Resident Evil can evolve into something more. If it's the same team, yeah, I want to see them do something else, but like, I'm pretty stoked for it now. Playing it again on Wii. Well, and like watching that video, it's on game videos. It's, it's from Famitsu. There's a, there's a few cool things. You see uh, the bad guys moving objects in the environment. That's new. Dude, when they die and, and they turn into like that bubbling pile, or, like, have you well, seen they, that? they evaporate. I mean, they evaporate. It's really cool looking. They, they evaporate differently, but. That's really cool. Uh, the, the only big thing is that, they, that the enemies can now affect the environment. That's, that's a big deal. So. 
Just and it gives us hope that the game might be out this year. I, I still think it can be out in November. And, and I think we'll be, be. I think good. we'll be. I think we're going to be playing it at E3. I think everyone's going to be playing. I it think it will be playable at E3. Yeah. Right. And, um, yeah. Probably both platforms. I mean, they, during the course of that demo, that demo, like so, it's an over-the-shoulder camera uh, thing of de of a developer giving a talk to Famitsu for the 25th anniversary of Capcom, something like that. And you see him playing both with a PS3 controller at one point, a 360 controller. So. There you go. You've got plenty to look forward to, I know, with the uh, leakage of the Dawn of War 2 stuff. Yeah, that seems pretty cool. It's uh, like, basically dude, all you, this, is in, this is in your wheelhouse. A Belgian magazine uh, screwed scans, up. Scans came out and they screwed up. Yeah, it, I, I don't know. They let the information up on, the, up on their website for a little bit. And, and so then they pulled it back down. This is, you know, Relic. Uh, they they made, you know, the original Dawn of War and also Company Heroes. But the cool thing for me is that now there would have been a time when I would have looked at that bullet pointed list of information and it would have been like, huh, here's some bullet points. But now that I know how Relic works and I'm able to, like, make the connections with, like, how they work in Company Heroes, it sounds awesome. So it seems like there might even be the, the potential for this game to do for RTS, like, melee combat, what Company Heroes does to firefights and stuff, where everything you see, you know, the environment's breaking if people are running in houses, if they're punching each other, their armor's coming off, and that means something. And when they're talking to each other, you know, I always talk about in, like, Company Heroes, how the audio dialogue is so, so spot on. Like, they're perfectly reacting. Like, like if you're sending a bunch of guys over a bridge and the enemy has booby-trapped it and you're kind of worried about it, your guy will be like, you go, you know, the guy in the German accent will be like, you go first, you know, I don't know about this next thing. Boom. So, like, sync it up with that. And then there's, it seems also, if you look at that list, they're talking about how you have squads that you upgrade over consecutive games. And, you know, we're, you know, we know that they're working on Company Heroes China, which is like adding MMO, mixing of like, you know, Dota Defense of the Ancients uh, mod for Warcraft 3 with some like more proper MMO things. And it seems like this is a teaser as to what they're going to be doing in general. So there's more and more almost of a role playing element to it. Yeah, exactly. Where you're, you know, you have, yeah, you have to you have really your squad. want to care about the guys, right? I mean, yes. Company Heroes and, did that, and it says that you can't. Your your squad leaders cannot die. If I mean, they can, but if you you'll lose your mission or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's oh, like wow. you have these. They're like your heroes, and you have to have them persistent. Mm -hmm. And they develop, and you change, you know, the way that they look because you unlock different things for them. And you know what stood out to me? Is, you talked about the melee. What stood out to me while I was reading this is like there's a new emphasis on melee combat because they're talking about having individual bits of armor on the individual shoulders be able to be br busted off right so you can like be able to zoom in and have like these really protracted melee combat fights so that could be really cool and even if it's not like too you know where you don't have to zoom in you it's still like company heroes communicates that so well i know this well and that's the difference between like donna war one and company heroes where you know in rts you send units against one another and they kind of just do anime like in warcraft they just do animations like they're fighting but they sync up so well in like company heroes that you know, someone's shooting, and your guys, like, dodge, or if, like, a mortar lands near you, you hit the floor, or it throws you on the ground or something, or things can hit you, in the, and, you know, physics, it, it operates just like an FPS would or something. So now you have this game where people are beating on each other with hammers. I'm, I'm assuming that you're actually going to see them hit each other with oh, hammers. Yeah. They're talking about this giant dreadnought stepping on things, and so it'll just, you know, actually walk on you and pulp your, your units and stuff like that. So it sounds pretty cool. I, I've, got, I've got high hopes in it now that I'm... Uh, now that I'm a believer in, in what that, that company does with its RTSs. Cool. Um, so no big surprise on this front as we move into the uh, home stretch here. Rock Band has finally been officially confirmed for the Wii. It's going to be uh, $169.99. It's going to come out June 22nd. I think the disappointment comes, though, from the uh, evidence that's mounting that it's a more of a port of the PS2 version. And really, who's surprised? I mean, I understand that, like, People like there's who, Rock Band PS2. There is, and yeah. it, and it's a, it's, a, it's huge. It's huge. I mean, because the, the core Rock Band experience is you and your three friends are playing Rock Band, and having a good time, and you can do that with this. You can do that with Wii. And the problem is, people who view Wii as a modern, viable next gen console are like, well, why can't I have downloadable content? Why can't I have online See, that's play? The big thing. Well, your console isn't that kind of console. Like Nintendo doesn't foster that. Nintendo doesn't. Nintendo want might not foster it, but the Wii is perfectly capable of it, and they pulled off online play with with a uh, Guitar Hero. So why, they and they sell all the damn like. Like virtual console games for these ridiculous prices. Why? Why? Why won't they? Just I don't know. It's stunning, sell? especially with the announcement that you know EA announced they made what six million dollars on downloadable songs. How can they not be wanting to get to tap the Wii market? That's it's like I I think they might want to, but it's just not easy. And like Nintendo isn't you know doesn't foster that for yeah. third parties. They're nervous. A lot of teams starting to wish that we had a hard drive. Huh? <sighs> 
<laughs> I guess. Um, certainly, uh, uh, fans of Rock Band on 360 and PS3 have a lot to look forward to with this week's master track pack of Boston, the first album. What do you want besides more than a feeling? Uh, what do I want? Bes- uh, peace of mind. Well, peace of mind. That's awesome. Rock and roll band. Rock and roll band. Oh, my God. That's a rock and roll it's band. It's all right. It's all right. And smoking. Dude, it's great guitar. You're going to buy all six songs. I will buy. You know what? I haven't, really, I haven't bought any I haven't bought any uh, rock band DLC, but I will huh? buy, I'll buy all six of these. You didn't Does buy it, Number of the Beast? Does that yeah. shit come with pull tabs, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Dartboard. Sorry, man. <laughs> I, I love me some Boston. I could definitely get into that. If you're into Aerosmith, uh, we have a preview up today of Guitar Hero Aerosmith, which people are acting surprised that there are other bands' songs. No, they said that there'd be. They said that all in, along. Bands like, that are influential to Aerosmith. So like Andrew, Aerosmith doing covers of them, or just their no, straight, straight up? No, it's just the other. It's just the other bands. And I, Andrew saw the game today, so they said that basically the mix is going to be sixty percent Aerosmith, forty percent other bands. We heard uh, we heard some cheap trick. Uh, Mott the hoople. Mm-hmm. So, you know what? It's so disappointing to me that this is not downloadable content. It's like it just kills why, me. Yeah. Why would they? And why fucking Aerosmith? Oh, well, that's an interesting story. It, what, like, it, how did that happen? It was Joe Perry's son. It was Joe Perry's son. So Joe Perry's son evidently was, like, kicked off on the original Guitar Hero, was, like, so into it that when uh, when <coughs> Aerosmith didn't ha- had covers in the second game, then the producer of the game came to them. They're like, yeah, we'll make sure and take care of that. Forget forget the you know forget the licensing deals. We'll we'll work all that out. We're gonna push this through. So uh, he, apparently Perry's driving the whole thing because he's really into it. And his kids isn't really into it. It's cool. Isn't that amazing? How I remember when Guitar Hero first came out and there was like no one wanted to participate. <laughs> yeah, there's well, old covers. That, that's was... another example of you know like a game at launch. The first week sales aren't always indicative of what's gonna happen with your product. Look at Guitar Hero. Yeah, yeah. No one's like who's gonna pay all this money for this fucking giant Fisher Price right. in a box. You know. Now, now it's, everyone wanted now it's to pay. It. You know what's sad to me is that like I try to defend Guitar Hero because personally I enjoy I I really enjoy guitar playing. I mean that, I have that, that's the most fun I have with it, and I think their tabs are really really awesome. So I have a great time with that. But th- when they do stuff like like this Aerosmith thing, would be an amazing piece of digital content to deliver and yet they want to go package it up in a retail box and sell it because they make more money that way and, and they can stick a guitar with both. it and charge 90 bucks yeah, for it so this is what they need to do is just do both i mean it's like no one says it has to be either or yeah, right you can buy the pack or, or download the songs i agree like, that's not worth fucking i like, talked to them about that yesterday for mm, not no. gonna happen so no aerosmith downloads not gonna happen that's not part of their plans however Got a little, got a little update for a Kotaku story that went up. So, uh, some folks who have been watching, uh, what is the name of the site where they pulled this from? Guitar Hero News, found out that uh, Def Leppard had been on a, a guitar on a radio show. What's the name of that radio show? Rockline. Had been on Rockline, and they were talking about their new album, and, and they were asked in the midst of it, you know, if it bugged them that any of their music had not any of their music had been in Rock Band or Guitar Hero, and they let spill that their music was going to be in the upcoming Guitar Hero 4. Well, I have a little news for you, folks. Mm-hmm. Rock stars don't always know release schedules, and it's not going to be in Guitar Hero 4. It's going to be downloadable content, and you're going to have it possibly before you have Aerosmith. Mm-hmm. So get ready to rock out some photograph. Yeah, I'm wondering which which era Def Leppard we're going to get hitting, a lot of. They're hitting scattershot. Yeah? Yeah, I think it's uh, some hysteria. Some animals, some photographs, some hysteria. Pour some sugar on it. Yeah. Get some oh, hootie in the blowfish. So I think moving forward, the idea of... How could you not do that? You can't. Pl- you have to play it on the bar. You have to play it on guitar. <laughs> We've talked about this before. I don't like the exclusivity. It's really pissing me off. As as the bands, you have to be on this side or that side. I, I think know. It's going to get yep. worse before it gets better. I'm kind of moving more and more towards the... I kind of want Rock Band to be the pl- a platform. Yeah. And just, just <clears throat> one thing. I can play songs. On. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Any guitar. Some. I wish the I wish I, I wish the note tracking. I I still like the note tracking a little better on Guitar Hero, and I like the I like the round gems versus the the square ones. I mean, that's like that's totally nitpicking, but it's I picky. I, I I like it better. <laughs> what can I say? It's some picky shit. Hey, I am what I am. <laughs> All right, Jesus, I made it to the end of the show. I'm God, sorry. I didn't I'm think surprised. I'd make it. Thank you, thank you, everybody. So here's your gem for for making it to the end. Weekend confirmed. Now everyone can now everyone can start their weekend. So John came in for that. Oh yeah, yeah. All I got was a weekend confirmed. <laughs> That's right. <All laughs> I, I, that'd be a good T-shirt. <laughs> anyway, for Andrew and Shane and John and Sean, this is Garnet. I will have a better voice next week. Until then, we are Ghost.